Welcome, welcome in to anybody watching. Uh, this is session three of uh, the Tales of Aona, um, a D&D &D live play. Uh, if you're watching live on our Twitch, thank you so much. Please smash that subscribe button. <laughs> uh, if you are watching it later on our YouTube, thank you as well. Please smash that subscribe button and the bell. Follow, I don't know, whatever they say. <laughs> um, if you, Whichever one you're watching on, go to the other one and uh, click on everything as well. Uh, it'll really help us out. It'll help us, uh, you know, the algorithm or something, right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we like numbers. Numbers make us feel good. Data science. Uh, yeah, numbers, no, increasing numbers make things fire off in my brain and make me feel accomplished. Unless, uh, unless, unless they're negative numbers, in which case, no. Yeah, I... Uh, like my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I went, like, I don't know what viral is, what the technical, like, how many to be to be viral somewhere. I went mini viral this, this week on TikTok several times. I had three videos that went over 400,000 plays and another, like, ten that went over 100,000. So I'm feeling... All right, feeling sure. good. Uh, we had over a thousand people watch our uh, Aona introduction video too, so that was cool. Nice. So, uh, if you're watching, thanks. Uh, if you have any tips on how we can uh, do this better, please let us know. Uh, we're trying to upgrade microphones first, then cameras. Uh, we're looking to buy three uh, small ribbon mics, or not ribbon mics, I don't know, small little condenser mics uh, for the overheads. Uh, so I just dropped into chat our uh, link tree. Um, you can check us out there. You can also, uh, if you are so inclined and want to drop us a couple bucks, we have a Cash App and we have a Venmo. It's just get hyped cash on both of them. Uh, all that money is going to go towards buying slightly better equipment to help us... Uh, make this better you know um i think that's all i got uh this week so yeah without further ado let's do further time to play some dungeons and or dragons uh <laughs> we, we only have one yeah slash um <laughs> we pick up uh, you have just entered the gates of rune Moor, right yes um rune Moor is a small hamlet uh, in the very far uh, northeast of the Boone Plates, uh, nestled uh, behind a lake and uh, in front of uh, some mountainous area. Uh, they only have a population of about 100. Um, pretty small little spot, 70% uh, gnomes. Uh, and as you come in, uh, like you guys did say, you see signs for, uh, for Sarah, uh, who is... Who, um, Stuart, Stuart. I, I didn't write down his name that you, you guys his, have. I thought his name was Stuart. Is he a, is he a mouse? Uh, he's not, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, so, uh. He's, he's fake Stuart. Uh, uh, yeah, that Stuart, uh, was sent from Rune Moor, you believe, to, to look for. Um, and you also saw, uh, see a, uh, sign for, uh, a child uh, named Vorbin, who was also missing. Um, as you kind of roll past these, you uh, realize that uh, there's a 100 gold piece reward uh, for Sarah and a 60 gold piece of reward for Vorbin. Wow. Um, Sucks to be Vorbin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you also see I mean, that's that... That's still pretty staggering for a small village. Right. Yeah, they must really want them. Um, you also see that Sarah Sandwich... It's actually S A N V I C H, a Sandvik. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, your friend Stuart were just kind of on, on drugs that you gave him. <laughs> uh, very drunk. Uh, and then uh, Vorbin's last name is Parsnip. Uh, Vorbin Parsnip. Um, <laughs> is Vorbin Parsnip like a halfling or something? Uh, he is. Uh, it, it, it does say, yeah, he is a halfling and she is a half elf. Okay. Um, I refuse to rescue anyone named after horrid vegetables. <laughs> um, Wait until he meets the rest of my family. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we'll interact with him, we just won't have a rest. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine being friends with vegetable people. You think we could turn in one of your uh, veggies for the reward? <laughs> karma, karma. It's me, like... Vorbin Parsnip. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm so glad to be back. They might not know the difference between parsnip and a turnip. Who knows? 
How much did you say Vorbin was? He was 60. 60. And Sarah you. was... Uh, 100. Okay. I tell you what, Funko can't tell the difference between a parsnip and a turnip. <laughs> there is a difference? I mean, ontologically, he understands the difference between the two, but he uh, does none of the books in his library have pictures. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you pull in, it is uh, in the early evening. Um, you see that they are also setting up for their fair. Um, the town itself, it has a, a small uh, wooden, about eight foot wooden fence all the way around it. Mm-hmm. Um, once you're in, it kind of has, uh, it's almost like a teardrop uh, looking town. It's, it's like ovalish. Um, the center has like a center street with um, some shops and some gathering places. And they have a, a large green strip kind of down the middle towards the back. They're setting up for their fair. It looks a lot different. Hmm. Uh, their fair uh, is basically uh, a long line of tables and benches um, that they're, they're currently setting up. And also they're just preparing for like a large feast um, and less of a, a festival fair type look okay. to it. Um, the very back of the town is um, the church. Uh, and then to the left of the church is what appears to be like a city hall type building. And then spreading out from it in all directions are the, the houses and streets and stuff. I have a question for clarification. Sure. When you say they're just <clears throat> setting up for like a feast, like are there dudes just like uh, out there with barrels and barbecuing things? No, no, no. Cause it's not yet. It's, it's like, still like we're still they, or two they days just away. Setting up like a very long table. Correct. Like, like they're a, just a midsummer. Yeah. Uh, type table. <laughs> yeah, they're just setting up tables and benches right now. Yeah, and it seems okay. way more low key. At the at the end of this festival, they're gonna put a, a, a beehive over someone's head. Not the bees. Not the bees. Um, I have some I could offer if need be. I'm gonna scratch that off. It's 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 better. It's better than uh, the ending of Midsummer. So (laughs) it's uh, we'll talk. We'll We'll talk more about it later. (laughs) (laughs) That could be on our podcast. (laughs) What? Why, why Josh is wrong about movies. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. I would be on that podcast. <laughs> I don't even know what your opinions are, but yeah, sure, they're wrong. Uh, <laughs> why not more Nicolas Cage? <laughs> Man, don't give me, I had such a great Nicolas Cage week this week. So I tried to solve that, like, good or bad Nicolas Cage problem. Mm. <laughs> the, the community. Yeah, I think it's good. I think he's... I think he's uh, just I, makes bold choices. I almost, I almost uh, stopped being friends with my friend because he kept talking mad crap about Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I always thought he was bad, and now I'm leaning good. I think he's good. I think he's a fantastic he's a actor. He's a true I think he just needs the right direction. I feel like he's either no. like... That's, you missed the entire point of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> he's in. Josh is wrong about movies. He's either, he's either the perfect Welcome choice... Welcome back to Josh is wrong about movies. He's either the perfect choice or the total wrong choice. When he's right, oh my God. He's no, I think I agree with absolutely that. Absolutely yeah. amazing. I think I agree with that. All right. Uh, so yeah, as you all pull into town, uh, there's a lot of uh, gnomes and halflings running around, mostly uh, mostly gnomes. Uh, it's later on the evening, but not super late. Probably like 7, 8 o'clock. Um, you pass a blacksmith, um, a small grocery store, um, a pie shop called Mother's Pie, um, a place called a Tough Climb, which is a uh, climbing and adventuring gear. Uh, you pass a place called Lyra's Illuminances. Illuminances? It's a, a sundials and such. Is that written underneath it? <laughs> um, Extremely can we get kinks engraved there too? <laughs> <laughs> and then your mug with like a the date of your retirement on it. Do, do they do sending stone repairs? Uh, and uh, there's a bookstore, uh, a jeweler, a place called Hex Hack and Slash, which looks like a weapon shop. Uh, and you do pass uh, three different taverns: uh, Gerard's Gin, uh, the Tickle and Feather. And a uh, rundown one called uh, Simeon Shanty. Gerard's gin, as in G I N, the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it looks like it's kind of like a, for lack of a better word, kind of like a, a hipstery microbrewery type place. 
There's a guy with a banjo in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's just a man with a handlebar no mustache thing. standing outside. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Tickle and Feather, which is a uh, two-story, uh, uh, it looks like it may have like a gambling hall, uh, pleasure hall, and, uh, and you did, an inn. And, and, it, and they didn't name it Tickle and Pickle? I mean, you can talk to them about that. It's the, it's the tickle and feather. I mean, um, I mean, I'm good. That's it. I'm foregoing all of my previous goals, and Funkel is now becoming a marketing director, <laughs> <laughs> a PR firm. Um, <clears throat> so where do you have to go? What, what do you want to do? Uh, I think first it might be good to find a stable to park at. I want to see if we can see Stuart anywhere. Like, are we short on the heels of Stuart? Like ah, it's hard to tell. From, <laughs> from what I remember, he was a couple hours before okay. us. Yeah, the last I remember is that he was uh, somehow uh, speed running the mm -hmm. roads, like uh, like speed you know, to the point of basically killing his horse to get back here mm -hmm. for some reason. We still don't. I don't understand his urgency. Which, if he did have a horse, he probably took it to the stables anyways. An excellent point. Let us let us go. All right, so you guys head to the stable, which is literally just off to the left as soon as you come into oh, town. <laughs> so you guys kind of circle around the main drag and head back over there. Um, at the stables, uh, you are able to, um, I don't know, park the, the... You have two horses and two hogs now, is that... Yes. Your ever-growing uh, menagerie? Um, soon we'll have an army of wild creatures. While we're, <laughs> we're in the stable, I would like to... Uh, uh, Paul Glorb's attention to one of the uh, one of the large horses that's in there, like a, a truly massive uh, horse. Clyde Dale. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and I said, Glorb, I do believe this could bring us inspiration to the next set of medicine, perhaps increasing your vigor and your speed. Look at the monstrous muscles on this boy. Yes, 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 let's do it, let's and do so it. I'm just going to reach up and I'm going to Pluck some of the tails out just ungraciously from its from its uh, okay from its uh, tail. <laughs> uh, Glorm actually looks exhausted. He has circles under his eyes. Uh, he he and does look like uh, we just. Did, we did get our long rest. Uh, yes, but uh, also he hasn't had a fix. Oh, fair. <laughs> fair. Um, so <laughs> they will uh, they will put up your boars for three copper each. And five copper, six copper for the for the uh, horses. So six uh, each or six total. Six copper? each. Okay. So a total of twelve copper. Okay. Or one twelve. silver, two copper. Okay, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Like what's 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 our math these days? Yeah, it's <laughs> ten, 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 ten. Um, which I don't agree with, but we're gonna do it because we're trying to play vanilla D and D as much as possible. Um. I, think it, I, didn't, I, I don't know, man. It bugs me. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. There's like dimes and, and pennies and shit, but it's still. Like yeah, I, I, I feel like copper's just useless. But I almost had a big diatribe where they're like, they've gotten rid of copper in this world. <laughs> they realized it was useless and cost more to make than it's actually worth. So they got rid of it because of inflation and the rising price of copper. <laughs> but. Uh, Decided this was not the time for the soapbox <laughs> on why there shouldn't be copper. And also, we don't really need quarters either. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, you just sort of flat, flatten out the economy by making, just make it gold. You know, like, everything costs gold. Eat a dick. Yeah, I think silver and gold is fine. Uh, I think the U.S. should have dollar coins. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay. They make you put four quarters in like anything anyway. Just give us a dollar fucking coin. I haven't coin. put That's a quarter it. into a slot in years. Yeah, but it, yeah, when you do, it's like what for parking or for a soda? Both yeah. of those are going to be a dollar oh, anyway. Fucking make, tolls. Yeah, tolls. Make a dollar coin. Don't even let you pay with quarters half the time for parking anymore. It's stupid. Yeah. You yeah. gotta use your credit card, baby. Swipe that you shit. Got a on, coin. A random, you go on a online. random machine that you Dimes absolutely should trust. I would say nickels could even be gone, but you know, nickels and dimes for change. If you, you know something costs literally a part of a dollar, because and then you get rid of quarters, get rid of pennies. All right. So anyway, <laughs> <sighs> twelve copper or uh, one silver, two <clears throat> copper. Yeah. Uh, puts them up for the night. Um, when we, when we get here, is there a horse that is like 
Roll an Fucked investigation up and, check. Uh, frothing at the mouth. Roll an investigation check. Can be ours. <laughs> <laughs> Your horse is crazy. Wow. You're looking. You're looking for a raggedy ass horse that may have been ridden by five hundred yeah. miles. Can I talk to the stable master? See if we can persuade him into giving us some information. Sure. What'd you roll? A one. Yeah, uh, the doors are just so big, you're like, I don't know what's behind them. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, there, is, there is a stable master. You may uh, speak to him. His name's Liam. 18. Yeah, um, he, uh, 18. Um, yeah, he's like, oh, uh, no offense, stranger. I just... Uh, don't share everyone's business with uh, with everyone. While you're talking to him, uh, uh, Sarah, I'm like Bucky. Uh, uh, Bucky's not here with us this, week, uh, this evening. He's watching Lizzo. Um, uh, Sarah notices that there is a pretty nasty cut on the uh, the leg of the the white horse that you guys uh, took in. Um, what? Shadow facts? Yes, shadow facts. Um, and he's like, hey, um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to stay here and make sure the horse gets some attention, and I can snoop around a little bit too. It's on uh, brand. It, that's okay. Is that cool with you guys? Mm-hmm. Excellent. That sounds like a wonderful plan. And he's like, Sarah hey, knows. And he's like, hey, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> like, say hi to your mom for me. Say hello to your mother for me. <laughs> but he's like, hey girl, you okay? Yeah, come on with me. He's like, me and this horse are actually kind of bonded a little bit, so it'll be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Say hi to your mom for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, and he starts asking a bunch of questions to the uh, the stable master. He's like, I'll let you guys know when I find out. I have another c- question clarifying. Like yeah. on, on the door to the stables, uh, is there like an ICC? Uh, to the stables, no. Like, is this a, a, it's a safe business to... Hand over our gold. Yeah, so um, the ICC is basically in the business of buying out every um, weapons, alchemical, or um, general stores, uh, and combining them into into big box stores uh, that carry all that. So they're not super into uh, into staples, but they yeah, you can definitely look around and see if uh, you know. Anything's going on in town uh, for that? I um, I'm gonna unload some stuff from the cart uh, just to keep it on me. I want to have my weapons this time, considering last fight I didn't have them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also gonna grab my, my barrel uh, just to keep my bees on me, so I can have some access to some honey. Um. Man, walk around. Buzzing. <laughs> it's, it's like a small barrel. It's like a backpack. Yeah. And the barrel's pretty well insulated. Unless they're riled up, you don't really just, hear it. I just can't wait till people see a man, a, a rabbit walking around with a beehive on his <laughs> back. <laughs> um, Horribly frightening. But yes, yeah, so I'll take that in uh, maybe some like dried vegetables and things that, just for like rations if okay. we can be. Gross. <laughs> Everyone knows a good lizard is worth more than two carrots. <laughs> My, I can't stomach lizards like you can. My, my alchemy supplies are basically strapped all over my body, so, you know, I'm just like <laughs> covered, covered in, in Didn't uh, know Funkle was alembics and mixers <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. I, I, I jangle a lot as I walk around. You're like a one-man band, but yeah. it's just... Uh, exactly. Yeah, instead of washing vials. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just random just stuff. The whole time <laughs> as he walks. Well, shall we look for a quick bit of logic? Perhaps a meal. I could go for some meat. Well, that's yeah. another tickle and feathers. It seems right up my alley. <laughs> I mean, are your feathers ticklish? Uh, uh, yeah, that, that was just about to ask. Like how, like I'm waiting for you to turn around and then I'm... Like, <laughs> maybe touch your maybe let him molt before you grab his feathers. Just look at you. All right. <laughs> slowly try to pull my shirt down a little bit more. <laughs> but I'm down with going to the Tickling Feather. Maybe some of the people might know where uh, Stuart went. It seems that Stuart might likely be 
a hired agent or a close family friend of someone with authority and or power. Who else do you know that would just randomly be able to find a man who's willing to ride like the wind on an investigation? Yeah, someone on drugs. Uh, when we I mean, you gave him the drugs for the last time. <laughs> Stop talking to me you suspiciously. There's no problem with drugs. They're, they're fine. Uh, Takes an addict to know an addict. That's what I'm gonna say. It's not an addict. It's I medicine. I, I don't have a problem. <laughs> uh, you have a problem. <laughs> uh, when we look at the posters, talking about Sarah Sandvich, mm-hmm. uh, does it say like report information to exit address? Uh, yes, uh, it mm-hmm. uh, says see Mayor Cedar Jingledale. I hate this place so much. Cedar, C E D A R, Jingledale. Jingle Dog? That's correct. Cedar is his first name? Yeah. Cedar Jingledale. 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 Not Don. Or Donk. It's whatever you want it to be. Let, is there like a. Uh, a mayor's house that it's directing us to. Yeah, uh, when you if you look down uh, at the end of the the, the whole thoroughfare there, uh, there is a large church, and then next to it, it seems to be like the town hall type thing. You expect that's probably where you would inquire. Let's let's go there. But we just got to town. Yeah, look at how we gotta go. We let's need to. On. We need we to present get, ourselves in a in a much nicer fashion. At least let us attend to. Washing off this road filth and quite a bit of that horse manure that you stepped in while we were in the stables. You stepped in? I thought he was bathing in it. Let's I, not. I thought it was medicinal. It, <laughs> it will be one thing. <laughs> all, right, all right, fine, fine, fine. We'll go to the bird feather whorehouse. <laughs> uh, they prefer the term sex worker. Well, fine, whatever. Well, they don't want to place a coin on that? <laughs> and then, on whether they prefer the term whore or sex worker? I mean, if that's the bet, uh, that's a pretty good bet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of like getting crotchety and uh, running across the, the side. Just... <laughs> <laughs> itching, itching. Like, every time I turn around, there's some other gnome. I also, I also want to, you know, uh, look, tell Glorb... Once again, like, if we take a few minutes and, and establish a room, I can set aside some time to create your next stable medicine. Here comes trouble. Hello. It will be stable medicine. All right. All Made right. from the stable. <laughs> so, All right. And we yeah. do know that uh, Stuart does like to frequent pubs, too, so farewell could be there. He could be. With your sharp senses and your tracking ability, there's no way Stuart will outrun us by a pace of three to one again. <laughs> what are you doing? You want to think backwards? All right. Uh, so, are we heading to the Tickle and Feather? Yeah. It All appears right. that way. All right. So, about halfway down the strip on the right-hand side is the Tickle and Feather. It is a uh, two-story building. Um... It's white painted wood uh, with large round stones. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, two stories. There's a wraparound porch and a wraparound balcony uh, with seating outside. Um, and it actually has the old fashioned, like, swinging doors uh, up a couple steps and able to push in. Oh, sweet. Uh, you guys heading, heading right in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a rough. Uh, like, black animal hair mat right when you walk in to kind of wipe your feet. Um, right past that, uh, mm-hmm. it gives way to a lush, deep red carpet uh, that literally feels almost like walking on pillows compared to what you're used to. It's just like mm. so soft. Uh, uh, Funko is, is absolutely horrified by this premise of carpet in a bar and or lounge establishment. I mean, there there's so many opportunities for spills, stains, and other viscera to, acqu- to, to, to accumulate upon these fine fine materials. With how you folk eat, r- eat lizards and, and mice, I'm surprised you care about stains. There's a reason there isn't a strip of carpet anywhere in a goblin village. 
uh, an elderly gnome with uh, slicked back gray hair and a nice outfit. It's like, oh, don't worry. We we have great cleaning methods. Do, do not let anything worry you here oh. once you're through these doors. Hello. My name is Rothmore. Welcome. Well, he's talking, I, just, I just pull out a bottle of my random stuff and I just start pouring it into the <laughs> carpet. Okay. I'm going to wipe my shit heel <laughs> on the nice carpet. And I'm like, let's pass. Oh, God. Could you could you demonstrate some of this miraculous cleaning? Let's see the cleaning clue, crew does come in in the mornings. Uh, well, you should have mentioned that before. I thought this was self-cleaning carpet. <laughs> uh, so beyond him, uh, there is... Um, There's a uh, wallpaper on the walls, uh, cream with a lighter red pattern, uh, with a, like a white chair rail, and then dark stained wood on the bottom half, uh, with ornate wainscoting. Uh, several chandeliers go back through here, um, with what appears to be, could be gems, could be uh, just carved glass. It's hard to see how nice these chandeliers are, but they look pretty nice. Um, they have uh, dripping white candles uh, on them. Um, there's a man playing a, uh, piano off to the right, uh, a slow, sensual song. It's like a, almost like a baby grand piano. Uh, there are six marble tables with iron legs, each with room for about six chairs around them. Um, and then in the back room, there's eight more marble tables that each seat like eight to ten. Uh, and they're white marble, but in the center they have green felt. And uh, you realize these are like card tables uh, for, for casino games. Um, central staircase, uh, right in the middle of the room that goes up. And as you look around, there is a, um, a balcony all the way around with uh, two-seater tables up there. And there are some people up there enjoying a dinner right now. Um, and uh, you get the idea this, this is the main place and probably the only place in town for... Any kind of drinking, gambling, nice meal. This is kind of a one-stop shop for any nightlife in this town. Um, and it's almost empty right now. Uh, for it being late at night, not doing great business tonight. Um, at the very far back, uh, past the staircase, past the gambling tables, is a huge, ornate, uh, dark wooden bar. Um, there's a woman behind the bar uh, who is an NPC bartender, so she is wiping a glass. <laughs> Just forever wiping a glass, waiting for anyone to speak to her. Um, what would you like to do? I would first like to, uh, you know, make a, an apology to, to Roth. My good sir, i sorry for the misunderstanding about the carpet. I often... <clears throat> Act before thinking through the entire consequences of my actions, and I'd like to pay for the oh. uh, additional work that's going to be required to clean this. And no I... need at all, sir. Uh, happens to the best of us. Please enjoy your stay at the Tickle and Feather. If there's anything at all I can be helpful with, please just let me know. Would we you be the person we speak to about rooms, lodging, and food? I am the concierge. I'm happy to take you back to the bar. Uh, where, uh, Sylvie can help you with any of that. What does the concierge do? I take you back to the bar where <laughs> Sylvie can help you with anything you may need. Uh, Excellent. I can also uh, I show you to your like room. I want him to pick me up. <laughs> like, um, whoop. <laughs> just get you under the armpit and just hold you straight out. Yeah. You're looking right at him as he turns and just keeps eye contact with you. <laughs> and he's like, I also uh, help set up any of the uh, card game or dice games. Uh, I can take baggage to your room. I will uh, bring food out to you as well. Excellent. Um, is there a, place me upon the bar. <laughs> is there a particular kind of feather that this is like? I believe it's more of a metaphorical feather. You're out of luck, Bernie. Yeah, the more my friends. It's uh, it's it's meant to uh, uh, purvey a sense of uh, playful glamour, Wincy. and uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, it should be sensual but playful. Ah, oh, 
Do you have any sex workers who specialize in deboning chickens? Um, and I gesture it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he looks at you and gestures up at the top of the staircase is a, uh, a human woman uh, in a long red gown. And he's like, this is uh, Cinnamon. And uh -oh. she would love <laughs> to, uh, I'm sure, make your acquaintance. I specifically gave you a warning about naming an NPC Cinnamon. <laughs> did I? Did you? Yes. And that's why I did. Because yeah. <laughs> I named I named an NPC in, in my other campaign Cinnamon Cresswell, and they just kept calling her Cinnamon Toast Crunch forever. Oh man, I she got, was the main the main important central story figure, so it worked out great. That's crazy. Say. This is literally the big bad thing guy. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. That, well, now I get now I'm definitely not going to trust her. But. Um, Excellent, Nix. There you go. If someone to tickle your feathers. If we were to, you know, quantify hotness on a scale of, say, one to twenty. <laughs> um, she is a human woman uh, with dark red hair. Um, so. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so that's him then. Is what they describe it all. Definitely alive. So so <laughs> has both um, hands. Yeah, feet. but no, she's uh, she's uh, a little maybe on the touch older side than the average uh, woman who would be doing this. Very beautiful, very classy. Probably the madam. I just means she has experience. <laughs> well, excellent. Um, I would like to. Uh, Inquire about acquiring us a room and uh, possibly a bath if they have that kind of facility. And he's like, We absolutely do have baths here, sir. We have rooms. Uh, absolutely. Um, so, uh, as you head back to the bar, he tells Sylvie uh, specifically what you're looking for. And uh, she welcomes you as well. Sylvie has a Short, uh, blonde hair. Um, very nice and pleasant looking lady. Um, so for the stay, it, uh, for a single room, uh, in a large bed, uh, you are looking at two gold piece, uh, two gold pieces a piece. Uh, if you don't want a private room, uh, you can do one gold piece, uh, for something that would sleep six in bunk beds. Um, but that, you know, wouldn't have privacy. Unless you, you'd buy the whole room. Does the two gold include the bathing facilities? Uh, the bathing facility is only, uh, one silver piece, and the ba uh, the bathing's actually downstairs. There's a bathhouse downstairs. So you're telling me it's two gold and a silver piece just to take a bath in this The place? rooms are very nice, and the private rooms do come with companionship. Ooh, Gross. <laughs> I don't. I already have Glorb. What else do I need? So we've been talking about like, a different kind like, of companion. Do you have goblin uh, companionship? Uh, we have. We have cinnamon. She's going for the whole. Hotel. Wow. She got some miles on her. <laughs> cinnamon the lot gets around. Well, we don't get a lot of visitors up here, and uh, we're a pretty community. small community. <clears throat> I'm fine with spending the gold for the communal room. If that's what everybody prefer, but if you want a private room for some private time, I'm not going to judge you. Now listen, I want to make something very clear. You have to watch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Funkle does not. Well, it Funkle does not work. Funkle is very nervous. He's gun shy. Okay. You know, he hasn't had a lot of experience with living people that aren't books, and books aren't living people either. So you know, you get what he's saying. Uh, I don't I know what to, I do. I have. I have some. Uh, brewing that I need to do, and, and uh, as you might imagine, some of the unguents and whatnots can be quite potent in their smells. And I know tiny wet rabbit noses can be quite sensitive. <laughs> if you want to have private time with cinnamon, you can just say so. Ah, I'm not gonna gosh. judge you. Could you imagine mm -hmm. well, the height difference alone? <laughs> Gross. Do you think I'm not gonna well, I mean you might okay. be into that sort of Do thing. Do you think if I gave Roth a gold he would hold me <laughs> during the process so that we were at least at an equal pelvis height? There might be another two gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they might charge extra for that. Yeah, um behind the bar, Sylvie's like, 
He has been known to pet Heron Reed for a gold. <laughs> so if you want him to read you a book and Who's play Heron with your Reed? hair. <laughs> he was the head of the Senate for <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with the computer room. I'm going I'm going to purchase a uh, private room uh, with with a I, I don't know if there's a form I need to fill out to make sure that no companions come to my oh, room. Oh, you can just under like, any just circumstances. Let Sylvie know. Yeah, you you would like the private room and you can all and somebody's like if yeah, if you don't need the privacy, you can all stay in the private room. It's just one very large bed. You're all smaller folks. What are you trying to say? Yeah. I'm sure you're wonderful where it counts. <laughs> well, I, can't guarantee, I cannot guarantee the health and or safety of either of you. But Glorb and I, we are so used to the chemical fog that we create during our experimentations. For science. For science. I'm Is still going to just throw out a gold for a communal room. Okay. <laughs> And is then, it, is it one gold per for, per person? Per yeah, room? no, it's one gold. It's just a smaller room with uh, three sets or two sets of three bunk beds. So yeah, uh, I'll, so I'll it, set the gold for it. Yeah, so and all I'll, right, then and I'm gonna be fronting the gold for the privacy screen. Cool. So you guys buy two rooms. It'll be three gold total. And you said how much for the uh, bath? The one silver. One silver. I'm gonna do that uh, too. I'd like a, a, a couple of bottles. Like booze. Sure. The cheapest the stuff you got. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we do have. Um, you can buy a mug of brown ale for four copper pieces, uh, or you can buy the entire jug of it for two silver. Yeah. You want to buy the jug? Yeah. So yeah, he goes and gets you out. It's a, an actually a ceramic mug or a ceramic jug, a uh, large ceramic jug with a cork in it. Uh, hold on, baby. Uh, full full of ale and it's it's about it's pretty big it's uh way more than it's probably like four bottles of wine size okay. it's, it's a nice big old of uh, pretty crappy house ale I'm going to start slurping that up try to build your confidence for the lady as, as fast as possible uh, then maybe like calm my jitters okay. All right, yeah, so you uh, pop the cork, and uh, he gives you all um, four silver cups. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do the thing, like, have you ever seen the, the jug thing where you, like, has, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Where it, yeah, instead of, like, trying to drink it like this, you roll it onto your arm mm-hmm. and just tip like, it up. It's, oh, yeah. You got a lot more strength like, when you yeah. the, the gallon milk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do with a gallon of milk. Yeah, all oh, the 2 a.m. gallon of milk. Like, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. how you drink your milk every morning? You roll it up and just Time like, for work. Put a whole <laughs> gallon of milk down. Mm. Okay, we'll head upstairs. Mommy will be up there. Would you say two silver? Um, yeah. So mommy I says hi, okay? Okay, she is up there, though. You just... You woke up from a nap and you don't know where she is. It's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just lay here. Uh, yeah, it is two silver okay. for the for the gallon. Uh, are you guys head up to your room or are you looking for food? Are you looking for baths? I definitely would like to go to the room and prepare a batch of medicine to soothe what ails Glor sure. in this trying time after mm-hmm. his after he did take the yellow stuff last time. I want to make sure that you know we, we fill him with something a little more calming. Okay. Um, all right, so you head up. Uh, what is everyone else doing? I was going to see what, there's what, what type of uh, tables they have here. Sure. For gambling? Yep. All right. I'll join on some gambling. Okay. So uh, there's no one there uh, right this second, and he does uh, let you know that uh, if you wanted to uh, gamble, he can call and have the uh, call for the person that does the uh, dealing. That could be down in probably within the hour. Uh, because it's a couple days before the fair, they just didn't expect anybody to really be doing table games, but they're happy to, to make it happen. It'll just be a couple minutes if you guys wanted to do it. You can always eat in the meantime. I was going to say, we can look around too if you like. Sure. All right. Uh, so you headed upstairs. You... Uh, we'll continue guzzling, and then maybe like after like a half a gallon of ale, 
uh, and whatnot, head towards because the bathroom is on the downstairs. Yeah, right. it's down. It's down in like the like, basement. Just get drunk and tired and start taking my pants off and walk towards <laughs> the. Uh, Has anybody paid? Uh, the bathroom. I did. Uh, I was gonna say I'd like to also you make sure that I uh, slip the, uh, the the sill. I'll buy a bath for everyone in the party if they so want it. I already spent money on mine. You already paid paid for all of us. I already spent money on a bath for myself. Oh, for yourself? It wasn't for all of us. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> then I have I, I spent the money for me and Glor. I'm going to I'm going to at least drown him in some water if he doesn't wipe that horse manure off of his feet. Yeah, I don't I don't like. Whether the bath is ready or not, I'm going to go <laughs> sit in the tub. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, so... Slurp, slurp out of this. As you head tub. down, uh, it's more of the same, uh, red carpeting, uh, with the red wallpaper, uh, but they, uh, I'm have... i talking about the floor carpet. <laughs> yeah, and they've taken so- the sides of the, of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> the floor and put it, laid in some of that marble... Uh, and after you turn the corner down in the basement, it goes to fully marble. And it's just a large room with uh, six claw bathtubs. Uh, it's really warm and moist in there already. Uh, and uh, as you head down, um, uh, Rothmore comes following. He's like, hello, uh, sir, taking, taking a bath then. Yep. All right. Uh, and that. you or anybody else? I was going to do mine later. Okay. I was gonna. I was going to uh, put my stuff into the room and sort of inspect the room. But once I realized that Glorb isn't behind me and he went to go get drunk in a bathtub, I was like, ah, I suppose I could go for a good old soak of these bones, and I'd like to rush back downstairs and find the sure. nearest tub to Glorb and start uh, pilfering some of his booze. You know, like hey, let me get a little, let me get a little, yeah. let me get a little yeah. tug on that. Yeah, yeah. I Thanks. will say, upon seeing Glorb go down and Uncle Funkle follow. Uh, down to the bathhouse section. I would like to go to Cinnamon. Okay. And see how much it would be just to get her to 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 join him in the bath and just just make them not not do anything, but just give them a confidence boost as well. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you do, uh, and she tells you you have to talk to Sylvie, and uh, you talk to Sylvie. And uh, Sylvie lets you know for uh, for her to help with a bath, it would be uh, six silver pieces. Easy. All right. Done. <laughs> so uh, as you uh, slide into your bath, which they actually have um, like wooden kind of almost crates <clears throat> that are... Uh, they sit into it to make it like more goblin size so you don't drown in the larger <laughs> bathtub. Uh, so they kind of put in like the booster and they're curved so you can like fit in there. Almost kind of like what you would wash a baby in. You know? <laughs> uh, and then he begins filling it up. There's a... Uh, you see that um, the room is warm because there's actually a fire uh, in one corner of it that is above a cauldron that they're boiling the water in. And they have cold water and hot water, and he's mixing it in a little cold, a little hot, okay. uh, and bringing it over to you. Uh, as that's happening, uh, Sylvie does come down in her uh, in her gown and cinnamon. offers to cinnamon and offers to uh, to assist you and to lend a hand. Uh, I would uh, like. Just kind of like check out her teeth and then like be <laughs> <laughs> just wait for like while she's talking and then realize that they're not sharp and just send her off for another uh, gallon of uh, uh, of booze and like then just commiserate with uh, Uncle Funk all about uh, the gross <laughs> flat teeth. Mm. Uh, <laughs> these these smooth skin individuals <clears throat> sure do lack the teeth for mastication. <laughs> any kind of proper purchase on meat or bone. They don't even have any scars of achievements. Well, <laughs> her scars are probably internal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, I, I, Jesus. I, again. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Glorb is probably utterly clueless as to what was supposed to happen there, mm-hmm. but then like half grossed out and like <laughs> her her over 
familiarity with Glorb. Like, what are you doing? Go, go get me a drink. Like, this is your purpose here. Uh, yeah. So she takes off. And she's like, sure. It's your, she it's it was your hour. Six silver she ever made. <laughs> yeah. So it's your, your hour. I'm happy to go get you something to drink. It's like, God. I would like some meat on sticks. Stick meat. Stick meat. And we're, are we? Do we have a tap started? Or? Sure, just open it up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And now Funkle's also, you know, moderately <laughs> inebriated. I, I just kind of like say, yeah, put it on the the rabbits or the <laughs> uh, uh, on his ham. <laughs> on what, Sarah? <laughs> no, <laughs> on mine. <laughs> I'm on his, Sarah. I've started on a tab here. Yeah. <laughs> you I didn't stuff. order yeah. food or anything. Yeah, a, yeah, I paid up front. I didn't start a tab. Well, you, 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 you just did. <laughs> <laughs> We're all close friends. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the bath is drawn, and you two are in it. Are you getting? Are you... I would get in later. Okay, so yeah, you two are in the bath, the uh, drunk, sloshing around. Yeah, two, figured, two different baths. I figure we're just uh, commiserating, making a, a god awful mess mm-hmm. as we like sing carousing goblin metal. Oh yeah, and and, mm-hmm. and just chug uh, jug after jug of this alcohol. We get to a point where it looks like like watch this. I can make fart noises with. <laughs> and they're really what water, water fast. <laughs> it's a real it's a real like uh, bikini car wash type moment, but with two hideously disfigured goblins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. After a few minutes, she does come back, and they have uh, they've made you uh, meat on a stick. They have uh, found a skewer, and it, it it seems like it's probably lamb. Uh, with some like onions and peppers and made like a little. Oh scooper. God! I said meat, meat. <laughs> what? What is this? I start throwing. <laughs> Get this shit out of here! Start, you start making a stew in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, blo- just we're, we're just throwing pieces into the next bath. Yeah. Over, like these are gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you up to? Um, I think we were going to wander a bit, look around the establishment more. And sure. I'd like to check out the room, too, before like, yeah. we actually use it. So as you uh, head upstairs, um, up the two flights to the rooms, um, Rothmore shows you up uh, to your room, and it is about half the size of their room. It's a... For this place, pretty plain, wooden floors, uh, a nice size window, uh, and on either side are uh, three single beds stacked up, uh, three high. Uh, and then there is a foot chest in each one of them to, to store things in. Okay. Uh, so nothing too crazy, and there is, uh, in front of the window, a small writing desk with a chair. Um, so, you know, you get the idea this is for your, like, traveling adventure parties to just crash for the night and leave, yeah. you know? Uh, who aren't partaking in anything in the in the tickle and feather itself? While he takes us up, I'm, I want to ask if he uh, has had any recent uh, check-ins today. Oh, um, today we did have a couple um, a couple people come through uh, who were actually heading down to uh, Ferenthorps uh, oh. there, which uh, you know. If you like lowbrow entertainment, I suppose Fair and Thorpe is for you. Um, but no, they um, they were um, heading down from uh, uh, up north um, in, in in the snowy lands, and uh, yeah, that's that we had them. They they checked in earlier today, um, and then that, that's about it. Nothing nothing too crazy going on. What kind of festivity should we expect at uh, the Rootmore Festival? Oh, only the best. Um, we do a homecoming feast. Uh, it's it's wonderful. It's something that I've enjoyed my entire life. I look forward to it every year. The entire community gathers together out on the Grand Lawn, and we feast together just like our ancestors did. Um, it's Everyone brings their finest dish, we share, we share stories and fellowship. It's really a day of rest and a day of nourishment and, and just togetherness. Um, it's if you've never experienced it, I urge you to stay and, and experience. It's 
a once in a lifetime uh, type of, of, of a festivity. Very good for the soul and relaxing. Hmm. Do you guys have some know. type of instrument store here? My strings are a little old. Oh, instruments. He's like, well, um, he thinks about it for a minute. And he's like, I think the best place for that would either be. I would try Lyra sundials and such. She does have a lot of lamps and sundials, timekeepers, hourglasses, candles, but uh, she does have a back room that carries some other fancy items. That she'd probably be your best bet here. Uh, if not, if you're staying for a couple days, I can have them imported from Cross Towin. It would be. You know, about seven, six, seven days, though. Um, but I could send a, 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 a bird out and, and get those for you. We could always check it out in the morning. We're probably going to be in town in at least a day or two. Okay. Uh, are there any, just from us traveling through and looking about, um, are there any, like, large fields, whether they be, like, farm fields or even, like, garden areas throughout the town? Yeah, so it's almost like, so it's like a teardrop shape with the main stuff in it. Actually, I'll just draw it out. So it's like the whole thing's kind of shaped, say like this roughly, and you came in here, and there's a lake that's real. Uh, the lake's real yeah. wide, uh, and so you guys came in on a road like this and came in. So your main drag is basically like this. And your <laughs> everything is eventually phallic with all of you. Uh, That'd be Yannick, actually. <laughs> uh, so this right here, which Legend uh, has it, no man can find whatever this is. <laughs> this is literally impossible. Even, even to this point, I still haven't even realized there's a building. That's, that's, that's where Stuart works. This is a church. That's where Stuart's at. This, 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 is, the, this is the steeple. Yeah. Well, Lord have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the town hall. Uh, you guys are roughly here. Okay. Uh, and then, so all of your, this is like the stable area. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so all of this and this is going to be your uh, businesses. Okay. And then uh, behind the businesses are just like groups of houses, like roughly like this. Now, would you say the the area surrounding this area is filled with like dense bushes or? <laughs> yeah, up here <laughs> is yes, all the way around. You know, uh, like dense really... forest. Uh, Almost jungle-like conditions. <laughs> so you will have little patches, but basically outside of the walls on either way is where the farmland would be. But uh, any, out, any like flowering, flowered gardens? Oh yeah, and things. all through here. Yeah, okay. there'll be like little back gardens uh, and so stuff. They, they keep the surroundings well manicured. <laughs> okay. One last question for you yeah. before we get there. You know anything about the missing children? Or have you heard anything? Um, it's 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 a horrible thing, of course. So we, you know, it's a, we're a small knit community. Um, you know, uh, Sarah has been missing now for for several days, and uh, we just just this morning found out uh, that uh, Vorbin is missing. Uh, we don't know how long he's been missing. Uh, he doesn't really have a family. Um, the poor boy. He has a father, but... And, uh, he... He's the ward of, uh, the blacksmith. Um, and, uh, he hadn't been home for two days. He sometimes helps out around here, actually, as well. Um, and they kind of thought he was here. We thought he was there. And it turns out he's neither. I imagine he just ran off. But they seem to think that he wouldn't have done that, so uh, you know, I, I think he'll turn up. He's more of a a roused about type individual, uh, but Sarah is oh, very, very concerning to us. She's a, a wonderful girl and uh, had a bright future, you know, she was promised uh, and to be married uh, in Gilderlunk, so 
I, I'm really hoping we get to the bottom of this. And uh, you know, between me and you, I, I heard that it was uh, it was Runemore. Or er, no, no, not Runemore. That's us. Uh, Fair, I heard it was Ferenthorpe. That's, that's what we heard. Uh, I heard that it was Ferenthorpe. I heard that she was kidnapped uh, uh, by by the folks at Ferenthorpe, and uh, I I really hope that we can get to the bottom of this. For the sake of everyone. Well, I would I would like to say, um, have you heard of the recent killings that happened in Ferenthorpe? No. Strange being is killing people in Fanthorpe. No a one seems to know what it is. strange being? Mm-hmm. What type of strange being, if you don't mind me inquiring? You know, we saw it and we couldn't even explain it if we, if we you could. You saw a murder? Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Something... Big black creature. Had wings. Jumped down and left immediately. <gasps> really? And I will say, I know you said you think the disappearance of Sarah is the people of Farenthorpe. They think that the murders there that caused rumor. Ta- of course they do. But between me and you, and he kind of like looks around and leans in, it's like cinnamon? S- described a winged creature in her window just a few days ago. Uh, we all thought it was just her imagination. Maybe she woke up from a dream. But she described a, a large black winged creature with uh, shiny reflective eyes looking at her uh, in in her window at night. Uh, interesting. Huh. Uh, Wouldn't mind having a chat with her more about it. It was definitely a scary sight to be seen. Yeah, for, a few simple, similar, I'm sure you could have a chat with her. <laughs> Well, set her off for the goblins. <laughs> well, best of luck. If you need anything else, I will be downstairs until about 11, 11 o'clock, and I'll retire for the night. But I am here on site, so if anything comes up, I will be happy to help. Well, thank you kindly. Yes, I sleep under the stairwell down by the bathhouse. If you need me. <laughs> There's a little single bed down there. They have, keep it real nice. You like to watch? Um, <laughs> a little. <laughs> This has definitely been an interesting episode. So, <laughs> so yeah, he leaves you guys to it in your room. Well, I think maybe uh might be worthwhile chatting with Cinnamon, seeing what she's see what she saw. Maybe she's got more information on whatever this thing is. Definitely, I'm gonna drop off my whole loot into the, the chest since I'm not carrying two. Okay. Cool. And then head back up. Cool. Or you want to check the room out a little bit? Oh no, I just wanted to see what what the quarters were like. We can we can always just at this point I say we go talk to Cinnamon, maybe catch back up with these two. Mm-hmm. Those two. <laughs> so as you guys as you guys are going down the stairs, it's me and Glorb down there, and like the uh, the jugs have started to pile up around the bathtub. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I just so I'm just gonna be <laughs> like leaning back in the hot water with like the jug just like gently bobbing because oh, yeah. it's mostly empty. And I'm like, yeah, Glorb, you know. You know what would be great? Is if we didn't have to pay. You are great. Money. You are great. Don't no. let anybody no, say on. you are that you're not great because <laughs> you're great. Yeah. What if? What if I could make this here jug put out beer? Just like without paying for it? Yeah. Like, like no money whatsoever for beer. Where would it come from? I think. Like, Lord, I have an idea. And I scramble out of the bathtub, like, just goblin naked, you know. I'm going. As I scramble over the edge, and I just flop out, and I'm like, Gorm, I'm going to need your help. Let's go. I'm going with him, butt-ass naked, too. All right, so you're just tearing ass through the mm-hmm. yes. tickle and feather. Just two wet, n- nude goblins with jaws. Falling over. Yeah. yeah. Are we just watching them? Uh, Slow, slowly spilling beer out of, like, the jug. <laughs> like, we're, just, we're just a hot mess as we punch our way up to our private private chambers, and I start work on my... On my jug project. Okay. Where are you guys going? As we pass out. I've, I've got work to do. <laughs> to Don't Nick. bother us. <laughs> Me or Glorb. <laughs> to Nick, so I'm just going to be like, I think Cinnamon may have tickled their feathers. <laughs> All right. So um, you two are heading back downstairs to talk to Cinnamon. Mm-hmm. 
All right, you find her easy enough. Um, Cleaning up the gross meat pieces <laughs> <laughs> in the goblin soup. And uh, and she's like, oh, hi. And immediately, like, you see that she is tired. You see that she is frustrated with these goblins. But as soon as she sees the two of you, she just turns the charm, like, right back on. And it's like, oh, hello, gentlemen. And, like, reaches in uh, and, and uh, pulls out, uh, like, gloves and begins, like, putting them back on and, like, trying to, like, present herself a little bit from, from uh you know, oh, to, like fancy gloves. Like, yeah, no, like, <laughs> like, 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 I was like, oh, that's like, yeah. yeah. That probably would have did it for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not like big yeah. rubber gloves. Yeah. Like, Bye, guys. <laughs> What's happening? Like, holy shit, what does she just assume is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Like the rabbit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I like operatic gloves. Uh, I'd like to just start by apologizing for the maybe uh looks like they had a bit of a destructive time with you oh what happens the tickle stays the tickle it's totally <laughs> fine um but actually i i just wanted to chat with you for a bit um you see i we we heard a rumor that you saw a winged creature at your window oh <sighs> we're not here to make fun of you about it we actually think we've seen it too it's it's quite strange i i keep i had a necklace that went missing and it was silly it 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 was cheap i don't know why someone would want it and i thought that someone here had taken it and and i couldn't figure out how because i locked my room Um, but then I realized that my window wasn't locked, and I I have a a small uh, balcony, um, and I thought perhaps someone had climbed up into it, but it it doesn't seem possible to me. Um, I keep it unlocked, but anyway, then the next night, I woke up and I saw a figure at the window looking at me Hmm. and it had it was a human shaped uh, small and had leathery wings um, and big shiny eyes that were almost reflective uh, truly horrifying and when it saw me it, it shot off into the night you said small? yeah um Larger than you, um, not, you know, it could have been a, a, a halfling or a gnome or a small, a child or not a full human sized hmm. How creature. How does that sound like what we saw? Uh, like, what you saw, saw blur, but... was bigger. Okay. Um, what you saw was Smush yeah, yeah like heavier, thicker, and full, like bodied. Yeah, mm-hmm. close to like <laughs> close to like more, more like a six foot tall type creature. Yes, yeah, bigger and blacker. Big enough to smush a gnome with one foot. Yeah, possibly. One tennis racket. One and did it racket. did it seem aggressive or? Oh, uh, it seemed. Startled when I when I looked at it and it, and it took off. Hmm. So I, I did. I don't know. It was it was nightmarish. I don't. It's... You'd never seen anything like this before. Oh, no, no, not a town like this. And we don't have any excitement. No reason why it was in your window specifically. I mean, I am the object of affection of a lot of people around here. I don't. I don't. I don't know. But also, it. Could have been back for more if it's what stole my necklace. <clears throat> I, I I don't know. I've started locking the window and drawing the curtains. I don't want to see it again. What kind of necklace was it? It was. That's the thing. It was not expensive. It was just my mother's. It was costume jewelry. So you know, it was. It was. You know, anyone who would have known better knows it was. It was too light to be expensive, and it, it wasn't. 
It looks good from a distance, you know, but it's not, it wasn't anything nice, but it had sentimental value. Was it shiny? It was, it was shiny. As you, as you guys are, uh, you know, having this deeply intense, serious conversation about uh, <laughs> creepy crawlies, you hear a uh, racket from upstairs, you hear, you hear Funko is like, Claw! Claw! Put it in! Put it in, Claw! Quickly! I've got it, I've got it! No! Push harder, Claw! Uh, harder, I'm doing it as hard as I can! Oh, oh God! She's like, well, I see your friends don't need me. That's, that's I, nice. I guess. Cinnamon, we need help. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sort of just quiets back down, and, and you guys never mind. Like, you guys are like, okay. Well, I think it might be worth sharing that info with our compatriots upstairs. Are you joining in? Uh, I might wait till it sounds like things settle down before I open up their room. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I might take a bath in the meantime, just freshen up. Yeah, as you're, as you're sort of walking walking away from her, sort of like wrapping up that conversation, you just hear Bungle yell one more time. It's like, no, no, that's too much, Glorp. Pull it out. Pull it out, Glorp. Oh, God. I'm stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> Ow! Oh God! <laughs> so once it quiets down, I'll I'll knock. Okay. I don't know so you, uh, after a period of time, we're just doing science up there. Okay. You you Very knock important. and uh, knock on their door. There's a there is a there is a roughly uh, like terribly written sign that says "Doing science, no disturb." <laughs> Um, really aggressive comment. <laughs> yeah, really. be like it's, it's Leaf. We we have some information on the, the flying creature. I I want to just like throw open the door, and you see like again, still still just uh, naked, not not nearly as dripping or wet as before from coming up from the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, Leaf, thank God you're here. I need honey. I need lots of honey, as much honey as you can bring me. I mean, I have I have my barrel. Um, great. Can you at least bring me a jar of honey? Quickly. Glorp! Glorp! Pour more in the hole! Do and then you, I, like, shut the door. <laughs> do you have a spare jar? I don't know! Get one from the bar! And bring me another one, too! I guess I'll wander down to the bar and ask for an empty... empty mason jar cup. Uh, at, at the bar, Sylvia's kind of, like, shaking her head. She's like, are they... Okay, up there. I, I think so. I'm gonna open the door and say, "Cleaning's included, right?" <laughs> this is worse than the Bard Troop last week. Here's a jar for you, and she gives you the Bard Troop last week. Yeah, we had these, just a, a troop of like, they they performed like a, a play, like a history of of. Something I don't. They were. Were they uh, awful. T D T D T D T D T D? Yes. Interesting. And they skipped out on their bill. They trashed the room. The worst. And a lot of people are saying that's who Sarah went with. I certainly, certainly hope not. I. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe I do wish she went with them. Because if not, I think that that awful kid from Farenthorpe has her. And that's what everyone seems to think. I hope she just got excited by the T D T D T D T D T and went with them, but I don't know. Anyway, here's your jug. Uh please try to keep the goblins at a six out of ten at least. I think once you know? they finish their project that maybe they'll quiet down a little bit. I hope so. I hope so. We're um, going to have to really party after this. <laughs> Do you happen to have, have any uh, <laughs> liquor that might calm someone down? Uh, I do. I have some tea. I don't know if I have like some bedtime tea. Maybe mix that in with yeah, some. That sounds gross, but I will. Sure. I don't um, think they'll notice. But yeah, um... Are you staying more than one day by chance? Do you know? I think we are, right? Yeah. Well, 
Isaac, our handyman who in in cleaner, is away right now. He should, hopefully, I thought he'd be back today. He, I don't think he is, but he should be back tomorrow. Uh, so just let them know if they do need anything. It might be a little later in the day. Okay. Um, hopefully he comes back uh, tomorrow morning. He was supposed to be back today. We'll see. Well, that, that certainly is unfortunate. It's hard to find good workers that might be on time these days. Well, I'm he's sure wonderful. Uh, he just thinks he's a detective. So when he's not trying to solve the world's uh, problems. You say. <laughs> yeah, he's it's ridiculous. He's our handyman. Uh him and our our mayor uh think they're solving the world's crimes. Is, I don't know. What does he happen to look it? like? Isaac? Yeah. Um and uh yeah, she just describes Stuart to a T. Okay. And, uh and he has a, a beard, like a, a short brown beard, and a human. He's a good. He's a good guy. Um, he just keeps trying to convince the mayor to get rid of uh, the the local. I don't. I don't want to bore you. We have we have like a local guard. Each uh, town has one. Um, we're far enough out that we kind of would like to break away from the boom guard at some point. Uh, and he really wants the job. Uh, so he's out trying to solve the missing children mystery while we're left trying to clean up after goblins. Gotcha, gotcha. That... But anyway. Well, do you happen to know where he stays usually? Isaac lives here. Oh. Well, he stays here. Uh, in does he exchange have a room? For... He does. Uh, he, he has a room upstairs, um, but he's not in right now. Well, what room? I'd love to maybe chat with him if he is interested in this missing, the missing kids. Which... Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So, you know how you turn right and then you go down? The whole left hallway is, is staff quarters. Uh, okay. So he's on, he's on the left down there on the, at the end of the hallway. Good to know. Thank um, you so much. Sure. And like I said, as soon as he gets back, uh, I will let him know to you know, fresh linens, fresh towels, fresh anything that you'll all need. Good uh, to know. Good to know. I'm sure he will. Some carpet cleaning. Lack sure. having some more to do. <laughs> yes. He will, he will not be lacking for work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll, you know, thanks much and grab Nix and head up to the the experiment. <laughs> Are you bringing honey? I, I've got an empty jar. I'm going to fill it right in the room for you. I, I also brought some booze for the both of you. Delightful. Woo! Now we're talking. <laughs> Honey, hand it over. I So I'll set my barrel down and I'm just going to start explaining the importance of bees and as I'm like getting it all situated. And Shut I'm up, like, nerd! Yeah. <laughs> talking about how, how honey is actually a very important restorative, you know, jelly, I guess you could call it. And that it's a... Uh, you can, it, it keeps forever. It's a great preservative, and the bees are very special. They, I mean, the honeys can vary in flavor and, and what they can do depending oh on what God. they forage. <laughs> and as I'm just showing the appreciation after I've opened up the uh, the barrel, um, some of the bees are actually going to fly out and uh, kind of like pollen dust over me, and I look shocked because this hasn't happened oh. to me before. And there's like a faint warm glow, and then it dies down. And I'm just gonna be like, "Well, that that was new." Holy crap! You have magical bees. This is gonna be magical honey. I I can't say for sure that the honey's gonna be magic. And I'll hand you the jar. Ah! And then I slam the I'm door in say, your face. <laughs> well, I'm in the room with you. Oh, I I know you're doing it. it. Yeah. Well, then I slam the door on whoever's outside. <laughs> I don't know if it's. I don't know if you no, stepped I'm inside. Not inside. <laughs> okay. I'm, We're just sitting there watching you okay, guys. So I just, you, watch me, you watch me and Gore run over, and, and I have it. There's like a jug that has a bunch of like knobs and stuff sticking out of it, like little like a, extra holes. And you're like, what the hell's going on here? And I'm like, and I'm just like quickly pouring the honey into one of the jugs. And like, you can see like there's beer on the floor, there's oil, there, there's like water. Like, it's a, it's a whole bunch of mess. And now, honey, and I like slam a cork at the one side, and I'm like, 
Okay. Shake it. Gore, shake it with me. Fingers <laughs> in two holes. <laughs> and uh, you guys sort of see the see the, uh, uh, the the jar sort of gets covered in like almost like runes and then uh, vibrates violently and then stops shaking. I'm like, oh, I think we've done it, Glorp. I yes. think we've done it. And I like take the, take the thing. I'm like, oh, that's mayonnaise. <laughs> I slam the lid back on. I'm like, mm. oh, that one's the beer. And I hand it to you and start Give it, give it a drink, Clark. Guzzling the, 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 the magical beer. Correct. And you guys just watch us. Like, he just keeps chugging from this this uh, this jug that's maybe a gallon in size, but he's just chugging and chugging like, and chugging. Way, way further than a, a gallon. Yes. Probably like four times a gallon. <laughs> at, at this point, it just becomes that... Uh, Milk challenge, and, and, <laughs> oh, no. and I think Glorb loses. <laughs> oh. You know, I hear there's such thing as a cinnamon challenge. <laughs> I think I think it, it's like that scene from uh, World Police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I promise I will never die. <laughs> <laughs> as as you guys watch, just uh, high quality beer just comes flowing out of uh, Glorb. To a degree and volume that uh, is mind-boggling, mm-hmm. with the occasional meat chunk. <laughs> but I, 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 I just I sort of like know. kick him as he's like moaning and like you know doing the the heavy recovery. I'm like, how is it, Glue? <laughs> Good. Yes. I can go one more round. <laughs> I think. And I turn like the jug upside down, and nothing comes out of him. Like I think you drank it all. Amazing. One more gallons. <laughs> you promised me endless beer. I mean, I'll work on it, but being at four gallons in a in a three minute stretch is pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys are like, it's a good thing they got that private room, huh? <laughs> maybe, maybe my honey <laughs> was magical, because that jug does not look like it should be able to make that much. Again. And did you say mayonnaise too? Oh, it definitely got mayonnaise. We put oh, mayonnaise God. In it. We put oil in it. We put water and wine and vinegar. And the question is, why was Glorp carrying a bottle of vinegar? I have no idea. <laughs> he said that's very good at getting out particularly tough stains. When you gotta clean up uh, so that no one will know. Exactly. Well, you might want to do that here, too. No, no, no. Remember, they have automated yeah. cleaning. The, the gnome said Sp- that the cleaning is free. Speaking of the cleaning. Yeah, it might be uh, what we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, yes, this room is disgusting. We're looking for cleaning. No, yeah. no, not, not not exactly like that. It might well, be your, your, out with uh, it, man. Glorm and I are far too intoxicated yeah. and drunk off science. He might be your druggy friend. I don't have a druggy friend. Stewart? I don't know why you I keep like, telling me that I have a problem. Why are you saying this about <laughs> Glorb? No, no, not Glorb. Why you gotta be such a dick we, about we it. We know he's... It, uh, we're talking about Stewart. Stewart? Oh, His actual Stuart. name isn't Stewart, and it's not Rumor. But he's f- still from Rumor. He's from here. Okay. He so actually... Right s- about that. He stays in this tavern. So what's his real name? Where, Isaac. Where is he? Well, he didn't come back, apparently. He didn't come in today to do the cleaning like he was supposed to. Apparently, he thinks he thinks that he's like a private detective, and he tries to help the mayor in solving this missing children's business. Are you trying to tell me he's a cop? Not exactly. But no, he, wants, he, he wants, wants to be a cop, exactly. which is even worse. Exactly. Oh. We got a vigilante up. Vigilante. Okay. I'll we do like myself. we do like vigilantes because you could beat them to death and no one cares. <laughs> do you know if anybody if he has loved ones? <laughs> would he be missed? Uh, well, I mean the people at this tavern would probably miss his cleaning. <laughs> I look around and like pick my feet up and it's just like splorching like, mm-hmm. like soggy carpet sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought there was like magic. No, no, apparently, no, no. apparently not here either, Glorb. I'm also disappointed. This place is terrible. Um, and then also, your your friend Cinnamon. She said that she saw a black winged, leathery winged creature with gl- like shiny, reflective eyes outside her window at night. 
How many times? Uh, she said she only saw it once, but, but it was how, smaller she, but she's, than the one that we saw. But it sounds see, a lot like it. She can't even see in the dark. She's got Same those deficient, outside her window. She's got deficient human eyes. Yeah, but if she had a light, if she had a candle light in her room. You could look out your window and see something there. Fair. Then Glorb should go and look through her window to get a really good idea of the vantage point. Yeah. I don't think that'll work. She says she closes the blinds. Yeah, so. she does close the blinds to keep the window locked now. It was probably Stuart. Well, she said it had wings. Stuart had wings, right? No, we're talking yeah. about the same guy. Not yeah. that I saw. Oh, red hair, leathery wings. That's no. no. <laughs> I think you're you're mixing some people up. I think I think you just had a little too much to drink. No. Here, have this, I'm, and I'm gonna hand you the the sleepy time tea booze. <laughs> All right. <laughs> drink up, dog. It seems it seems like it will help us relax. To science. <laughs> science. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna have his work out. Uh, like, Apparently, my character uh, just drugs people. I one of these things, and I just like toss it behind me, uh, which yeah. like you can audibly hear that it like splashes against the wall as I'm like, mmm, tasty. I'll, I'll pound mine down again, but then start. To... <laughs> oh, that meat was bad. <laughs> Someone, someone should report these guys to yeah. OSHA. Uh, there is a knock on your door. Uh, uh, who, who is it? Uh, hello, I just wanted to let you know that uh, our uh, gambling is now open downstairs. Oh. We have two tables if you're, anyone is interested. Hey, someone stole my pants. I can look into it. I, I believe we ahead. left our pants in the bathing area. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I and can have them laundered and brought up to you. That would probably be for the best. Do you, in the meantime, need something to wear downstairs? There is a there is are it robes, required? There are terry cloth robes in the closet. Uh, there should be several. Oh, wonderful! I will just wander through, <laughs> wander around now in a terry cloth. Robe. They're a little long on both of you. <laughs> There's dragging the floor, yeah. and they're white. <laughs> They have the crest of the tickle and feather on it, which is like uh, two crossed feathers with a TF in front of it. Mm. And uh, yeah, they're really nice and really comfy. Oh, I love it. Uh, does everyone want to head downstairs? Or? Well, before yeah. we do that, I'd like to I'd like to propose an option. Uncle Funko's not much of a gambler, but he is a great investigator. I say while the gambling is occurring, you enjoy the festivities and keep a lookout, and I will go and investigate Isaac's room to see if we can learn more about him. Perhaps he keeps a secret drawer filled with rocks, or a journal of some kind filled with his feelings. Um, I mean, if you would be so inclined, I, it's just down that other side, last room on the left. Excellent. Does anyone else have any thing, any ideas or inputs before I go on this brave mission? Why, why was the, 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 why was the, the, the Batman or the, the, the squishing creature uh, staring at the cinnamon? Not too sure, but it sounds like it might be a, a smaller version of it. Like a, sure, Isaac's not just some pervert. I don't think it was Isaac. So we're dealing Isaac with... Isaac was in the bar with us when uh, Birdie got squished. Perhaps a jealous lover. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Mm. That explains everything. Mm. <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> I am a great detective. Oh, and... Oh, um, and your legacy medicine. Apparently... Excellent. Uh, the bard troop that Tristan belonged to... T D T D T D T D T D T D T D T T D performed here, skipped out on their tab, and then that some people believe that Sarah went with them. You know, that does sound a lot like Tristan, does it not? <laughs> remember when remember when that k- kerfluffle was happening and, and he lost at his the hand? last place? And, oh. And uh, <laughs> he ran out the back door like a coward trying to hide while we were running out the back door to investigate? Mm. Courageously? Courageously. <laughs> yes, Glor. <laughs> 
Well, well, don't forget to tell him we're the best detectives. It is true. It seems like Tristan has lost his head. He's lost his way. A little bit, a little bit. Um, you know, little soon. Has a good head little on his soon. shoulders. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I'm Lord, gonna go. Enjoy game. your time. Create a moderate, a, a medium to moderate ruckus in about fifteen minutes. All right. All right. All right. You guys head downstairs. Uh, there is a uh, thin man in a straw hat with a pencil mustache and a little vest. And he's like buttoning it and getting it all put together as you come down. He's like, welcome! Welcome! Uh, I hear you're interested in some table games. Yes, sir. Okay, well, uh, the two that we tend to play here at the Tickle and Feather, which uh, I'm happy to help with either, uh, we have uh, one called 21. Um, and then we have one uh, called Tamora's Spinner. And uh, 21 is literally just blackjack with dice, and Tamora's Spinner is uh, basically roulette with a d20. Um, and I'm happy to do either one. Uh, Any preference? Yeah, I'm going to go down to like, constantly watching the, the time pieces. The what? The time pieces, because we have a 15 minutes uh, oh, with okay, the yeah. to cause a rocket. Sure. Uh, I'm partial to 21 myself. But. Sounds good with me. All right. So the way this game is played is um, there will be a buy-in. And he's like, uh, you know, since we are not, uh, you know, officially doing any kind of thing, we can, uh, what, the we can set the buy-in with you all. I don't want to have it too rich for your blood or, or or too little that it's not exciting. Is there anyone else in playing? Or? Uh, not right now. There's uh, only a couple, there's two couples up at the top finishing up their dinner and just talking. They are looking, they may join, but as of right now, it would just be okay. the, uh, the house versus uh, any of you. Um, so he's like, so it's really pretty low key. We can make it as little or as much as you'd want. Um, the house will match. Uh, I could suggest a, a buy-in of a silver if you'd like to get it started. Then Here's we can... ten gold. Or we can buy in with ten gold. I, I don't think I can afford that. I'll, 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 I'll buy him ten gold worth. You can afford that? I have forty-four gold. So ten gold, ten gold? Ten gold. I can't afford ten gold. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for his oh, ten gold. Yeah. To you. Okay. So, uh... The, the the he kind of nods he kind of nods over to the bar and, and Sylvie uh, opens up uh, her register and gets out ten gold and sets it on the counter to show you that they can match and he's like so what we'll all do is we'll all uh, roll two d ten to uh, get started <clears throat> actually the dealer rolls last so you three will roll the two two d ten. Okay, and we'll start on the left side of the table. Uh, what'd you get? A six and a two. Uh, so you have eight. Would you like to roll another d10, or would you like to stand at eight? The goal is 21. I'm going to roll another. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll again. Nine. All right. And, uh, so a nine and eight is 17. Uh, would you like to stand at 17, or would you like to roll another d10? I'll, I'll stay at 17. Okay. I'm at 14. Okay. I'm going to roll one more. Okay. 17. I'm going to roll one more. Okay. If I can. Yeah. Oh, you can roll as many times as you want. I should go all I went over. <laughs> okay. So you were out. <laughs> so 11. 11. Roll again. Alright. I'm at 15. Alright. I would like to roll one more time. Okay. I am over. Okay. <laughs> so it's just Glorp versus the dealer. You have 17. Mm -hmm. The dealer rolls uh, 11. Uh, 16. He has to roll again. And he is over. So, Glorb uh, wins 10 gold, basically, and, and their gold back. So, uh, yeah, you spent 30, you get 50 back. 50? Yeah, right? No, you 40. Gave out, you gave out 30. Math, man. 
Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, you spent 30, you got 40 back. I'd like to go again. I'm gonna start with five gold. I don't wanna go too crazy. And that seems over. crazy to me she too, nods. but. All right, so if she puts out five more gold. Anybody? Uh... I'll, I'll pay for you too. We'll all do five. Okay, go ahead. Not a D10. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, wait, 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 wait. I did that wrong, didn't I? No, no, that's right. I don't know. I'm so bad at how Vegas works. Me too. I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. If you're, the, the, rule, the rule is deal, dealer hits on. Uh, oh, wait, 16. no, no. Because they busted, so they would have lost their money to the house, mm-hmm. not to him. Yeah, yeah. So you won, but you only won 20 gold. Okay. So you actually lost 10 gold by giving them the gold. And the house lost 10, but gained 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hence the house yeah. always wins. Because, yeah, you're I, not playing against them. You're all playing against I the didn't know, I didn't realize that you weren't playing uh, pot. Yeah, no, no, no. I was, and I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm like, wait, they can't do this all night. They're just going to lose all their money. It's like, how do they do this? I'm like, oh, that's right. Yeah, you're each playing the dealer. That's what it is. So even though you won, you lost 10 gold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I rolled 8. Okay, uh, what would you get? Uh, I hit nine and then a five for 14. Uh-huh. Uh, five. 15, 16, 17. All right, so we're going for 17. <clears throat> I'm at eight. Okay. That'll put me to 15. I'll go okay. one more time. 17. All right. And I'll stay there. All right. I rolled 17, and I'm going to stick. Okay, 17's all around. This dealer has to beat 17. Here we go. Uh, 13, 14, 20. Damn it. Everyone is out five. You're out 10. You're out five. You're out nothing. It's like, shall we go again? Uh, has it been about 15 minutes? Um, No. <laughs> about five. Okay, no, it's try roulette. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, so the way this works is uh, we'll say it's a wheel with 20 uh, things on it. Uh, you may guess the exact number, odd, even, 10 or under, 11 or over. If you guess the exact number, it pays five times your bet. If you guess anything else. It would be 20 to 1 if you were going back. Ah. Uh, Oh, that is true, huh? Yeah. All right, so it would be 20 times the bet. And then everything else is 1.5. Okay. So if you guess odd, even, 10 or under, 11 or up, you get 1.5 times your bet. If you try to guess the exact number, then it would be 21. Okay. Can you do more than one? You sure can. Is it increase the bet amount for each thing? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, bet. Okay. yeah, you have to bet. Like, I'll bet on the two, the five, the uh, evens, the, you can do basically it. Basically, pick black and red or even or odd, you know. Right. So, so. Okay, okay. Um, and shall we just make it a gold per bet? Sure. sure. Or more, gold or more. All right, what would you like to I'm bet? Gonna, I'm going to bet the... One to ten or zero to ten. You have the okay. marker. Do you have the marker? Yeah, sure. All right, so Glorb is gonna bet uh, the one to ten. Next, do you need money still? No, I can bet one. You have to write it down. What? I'm just. I know that. <laughs> I'm having fun. All right. Oh, I love it. I'm We're making a little uh, roulette table. Go. Roulette's my favorite game. Is it? 11 yes. to 20 really and it. odds. All right. We got evens, we got odds, then you got the uh, 1 to 10, and then the 11 to 20. All right. And now you can actually place chips on it if you guys want. <laughs> place your dice on it or something. Yeah, that's why I thought it would not be fun if you could just put your dice on the thing. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> or, your, or your figure, you know, if you're only betting on one thing. You're doing, he's doing the boards. <laughs> They're coming in handy. All right, so you're betting odds and 11 to 20. Mm-hmm. You have bet Which 1 to 10. Odds? Yeah. This is odds. Yeah. yeah, so you're also betting odds. And who bet exactly? I bet 13. All right, so 
So you're putting in two gold, two gold, and one gold? Yeah. Is that where we're at? Mm-hmm. Is it... I it's one it gold per bet. One gold per bet. So two gold, two gold, three gold. Or wait. I only have two you bets. only have the two Yeah, two bet, two gold, gold, one gold. Yes. Yeah, all right. Sorry. Here we go. No more bets, no more bets, no more bets. 19. Hey. So uh, the odds win and the 11 to 20 wins. Woo. Uh, so 1.5 gold, 1.5 gold, 1.5 gold. Right? No, he's got both boars. Oh, One so three gold. Eight. So he's got three. And yeah, so you bet two, you got three. You bet two, you got 1.5. Yep. You got nothing. So I gained a gold. Yeah, and yeah, you lost five silver, you lost a gold. Also, for those, for those, it would just be easier if you just did like a double, like they do for black and black and red. Just mathematically, so you don't have to do like 1.5. Okay. The house doesn't love it, but I'll allow it. <laughs> All right, so everything else is double, double the money, or five, or uh, twenty times the money. Yeah. So, see, whenever I do gambling or anything in this game where I give you too much money, you all are like, "Oh, do you do we're giving away all well, this money?" That's why you put a limit on it. This isn't this isn't high rolled or crap shit. Out. All right, so the limit is just one gold per bet. I mean, you could make it up to like five or one to five. You know what I mean? Okay. So that all right, five. I like so, that. So that way you have one or five. Those are your bets. Oh, I like it. All right, so yeah, you can bet one or five gold on any of this. And it's either double your money or five times or twenty times your money. So you got four gold. So you won two gold. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, and then you broke your break. You lost a gold. All right. Would you like to go again? Yeah. Place your bets. Place one your bets. One more time. Bets. One more time. Lorb is a master of gambling. <laughs> place your bets. I love that you love this game and aren't playing. <laughs> That's <laughs> my favorite love, game. I'm, I'm literally saying. over here like. Scratching my hand like a goddamn drug addict because like it's the only thing I play in Vegas. You said I can put five down. Yeah, so you're putting five down on four. Yeah, and we got uh, even, an odd, and a one to ten. All right, no more bets, no more bets, no more bets. Damn it! Thirteen odd wins. You should have stuck with the previous. So you win two, you bet two, you break even. Yep. Uh, You lost five gold. You lost a gold. All right. See, this is why the house always wins. Yeah. Statistically, you never bet on a single number. No, you should always do it. Don't listen to them. Um, One last one? We should all go to Vegas. Uh, (laughs) uh, I could never go back to Vegas. (laughs) They know me too well. Um, You know what? I'm going to... Last one? One more? I'm going to do... Five, on, five gold each. You have five gold each or one gold each? I'm doing one gold <laughs> each. I don't have enough to do five gold each. Uh-uh. All right, we got one to ten. We got an even. We got an odd. We got eleven to twenty. We got the number seventeen. We got the number four. five. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Come on, seventeen. All right, here we go. <laughs> no more bets. No more bets. No more bets. <laughs> Oh, 13 again. Yeah, I lost that one. Odds, and so, yeah, so you lost one gold, but you gained two extra. So you gained a total of one gold. Okay. Everyone else lost a gold. This is why Uncle Funko doesn't gamble. And it's also the reason that uh, Jason Lee doesn't go back to bed. Taking a beating on yes. this. <laughs> <laughs> I like it better when I won 50 gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, a lot of, you know, having some fun, having some laughs. Uh, they do comp a drink during this. That's nice. You guys get each get, like, a nice little pink fruity drink that they comp. I, I, guess, I would... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, like, I asked for a bucket, and then, like, at this last thought, or loss, I... Like, <laughs> 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 Your meat is bad. And then, the food is not good. While these guys are gambling, I'm trying to distract the couple that's like that can has like line of sight on the yeah. door that I'm trying to get into. Okay. Then I'm like, hello, good friends. This place has a very nice policy of giving a few uh, easy chips to play with, and I sort of slide across uh, a, two stacks of five silver to each of them. And I'm like. <laughs> That's part of their loyalty reward, but you have to use these at gambling. Make a deception so, check with disadvantage. Because <laughs> they're locals and you're a goblin they've never seen before. I'm also, I'm also picturing dinner. he's in the room, but it's open. Yeah. 
<laughs> Goblin dick just flat. <laughs> well, I, I would like, like I would like to uh, let you know that I rolled absolute travesty of deception at a total at a total of four. Uh, but I so would like yeah. to counter with a performance for how well my dong my dongle is dongling. Uh, no. No. Uh, I will say <laughs> they don't believe you. Yes, <laughs> they don't believe you, but they are just genuinely afraid of you. They have watched you two since you got here, come streaking naked out, him vomiting everywhere, you running up and down stairs, screaming sexual things to each other, and now you come out as like a the person who works here, uh, that, 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 <laughs> like that, that, some silver, like. Thank you, sir. When they when they don't when they don't take they're like, it, they offer. Just, or no, they're I'm, taking it. Oh, they're taking. Do, yeah. they do they start getting? Yeah, you know, oh, they're petrified right. of you. They're like, thank you, man who clearly works here. We will go spend this money, honey. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't make eye contact. Come on. <laughs> let's just go. Let's just go. Don't make and eye contact. The, the, don't make dick contact. The two gnome, they're a gnome couple, gnomish, and they uh, they get up and they're like, let's just go spend the money and let's just go home. Let's just go home and we get on our couch. And uh, we can we can just read a book. Like, let's oh, just get out of here. Great. We'll pay our tab. Let's go. And they like head down. They head out and around and down the steps. I'm just and gonna they're like, whatever was on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a rack of lamb. They yeah. had not <laughs> finished yet, and it was it's really really good. Um, Doing all that science works up an appetite. <laughs> so yeah, they're like, hi. Um, can, we would love to join you. <laughs> the more the merrier. Like so, it's a gold buy-in. That that goblin gave us ten silver, so we're gonna put it all on fifteen. I'd recommend thirteen. It's been pretty hot tonight. Oh, okay. And they just move it over to thirteen. Is anybody else gonna play? We don't care. It doesn't matter. Please roll I'm the dice. Please roll the dice. Please just roll it. God damn it! Oh my God! Please roll the. He's and he's like, honey, while you do this, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm right. gonna pay the tab. It's like, don't you. Don't you fucking leave me here, Leonard. Don't you leave me at this table. <laughs> like I'm gonna pay the tab and then we're gonna we're gonna head out, roll the fucking dice. Uh no more bets. No more bets. We got thirteen. We got uh, five. We got fifteen. We have odds. We have evens and eleven to twenty. Kind of me so far. Come on. Damn it. Well, I, I was almost 13. I, I, and I, up. So you I got broke shit. I broke even. Broke even. And whoever's on evens, one gold. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. This person lose. Yeah, they're like, oh no, we lost. Let's go. And they like scurry. And they like drop another gold for the staff. They're like, we're so sorry this is happening. Bye. And it's like turn around and just head out of the, the, the place. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other couple the number, who was right? finishing up have no, silently gotten, gotten up and just left as well, just down the steps, and just casually as they can be, exit the building quickly. Uh, it's so a, is you have the place yourself now. Oh, okay. Yep. It's just the staff and you. I'm gonna start making a scene. Okay. Then you weren't uh, already. <laughs> that no. wasn't the scene. That was not the scene. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna like just start screaming about uh, the the table being rigged. Uh, I'd, like try to uh, get all of the the service folk focused on us. Be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna channel uh, what's her face, the Karen from uh, Birdie. Birdie. No, oh, yeah. From uh, Farenthorpe. Farenthorpe, and uh, like talk about how how important I am and. Uh, like it's it's all those other people that are causing a problem, and then like roll a performance check uh, with advantage for being a drunken goblin in a terry cloth robe. <laughs> who was just who just lost all his money and threw up in a bucket? <laughs> yeah, it's for being the G.G. Allen of of goblins. I mean, it's a great performance. So you know the 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 dealer. Oh, you said advantage. Yeah. Okay. I said, there's no way you, you got rolled two, two ones. ones. <laughs> I mean, there is a way. You got a zero. A yeah. one and a zero. I have a negative one to my <laughs> so, so you rolled a two and a one. As you're, yeah. like, throwing a fit, but kind of, like, giggling <laughs> through it, the, the man who is helping facilitate the gambling kind of just stands up and just like chuckles and goes over to the bar and just puts his elbows back on the bar and the whole staff is just 
lined up watching you rant and just kind of like the distraction works not for the reason you want it to work <laughs> they're just all very entertained by this very bizarre goblin uh, but they are distracted it, it did work all right. they're not they don't think you're upset they think maybe you're special and just, <laughs> like enjoying the goblin. He's, the, he's he's Rain Man without the uh, card counting. <laughs> yeah. like, you think you'd be better at this? <laughs> so in the interim, I am I am of course you know like jiggling jiggling the door to see if it's unlocked. Oh, you heading down to yeah? It no, is, I'm, at, I'm yeah. at that door. Yeah, yeah, it is unlocked. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna be like. Slide, slide in there as sure. quietly as I possibly can. Uh, so yeah, it is a tiny room. It has a desk, a footlocker, and a bed. I would like to make an investigation of this Please room do. for anything. Please do, as you goblin toss this room. I have received a 20. A 20. Uh, so you do go through uh, not a whole lot. Your average regular clothes... Uh, some work tools, things like that. You find what he uses to clean the carpet. Oh, uh, what is that? Uh, it's a homemade concoction. If you'd like to take some of it. <laughs> I was like, like, you know, like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. ammonia. That, that tracks. Vinegar, just like Glorp said. Some vinegar, <laughs> some ammonia, and some lavender. I'm like, where does he get his ammonia? Do you think he distills it from his own urine? <laughs> urine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um... But in the uh, desk drawer, you do find some loose papers with some scribblings on it. Uh, no full, like, sentences. Uh, you basically derived uh, a lot of names you know, like, speak to Cinnamon about, uh, you know, uh, the missing girl, and speak to Sylvie. Um, and then he said, uh, Sylvie says to talk to Sarah's mother at Fairy Tale Looks. Um, and Crispin at Mother's Pies. And underneath it, uh, Crispin deals with Jolly Baker. Look at son? Question mark. Um, uh, what else does it say? It also says, um, oh, I know. It says, um, Sarah promised uh, to hold please there it is Sarah promised uh, to Gaius Ty spell it it's G-A-U-I-S T-I-G-H um, son of Captain Ty of Gold Tip on the Royal Council in uh, Gilder Lake that's a lot of notes. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what he has. He has that uh, who he talked to in town and that she was going to be married uh, to a guy whose dad is on the Royal Council as like their uh, gold tip uh, liaison. Okay, so this guy's a, clearly a terrible detective. <laughs> These were all well-known facts. <laughs> and I was like hissing angrily at this as I'm like, this guy sucks balls. This guy's terrible. Just, 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 just peeing in his uh, cleaning <laughs> concoction. Yeah, I just gotta <laughs> refill it back up. <laughs> with, like, with, with some fresh goblin urine. <clears throat> like, we keep cleaning this carpet and it just keeps smelling like garbage. It, uh, <laughs> it, it, it smells like it smells like can't pee that someone put in a microwave. <laughs> All right, so that's that's what you uh, discover. Uh, do I find any of his personal belongings, coins, uh, treasures? Nothing, nothing money wise. Just some of his clothing and, and you know personal effects. Okay, I'd like to steal all the buttons off one of his shirts. Sure, <laughs> easy enough. Easy enough. Just pop them all off. Uh, and uh, yeah. How many buttons do you think? Ah, uh, what is on a shirt? Six? Six. I don't know. I mean, it could, it could just be like guess. A, a tunic button. It could be two. Jason, count your buttons. Just roll it. Just roll a D six. <laughs> yeah. Seven. 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 How many buttons are on this shirt? Six, seven. Seven. Seven, seven buttons. buttons. <laughs> Nine, if you count the two that go around the. Power. He doesn't have those. He's not that fancy. Uh, um. Was that a bit of vintage? Seven shirt buttons. 
Yes, thank you very much. Seeing that Uncle Funkles doesn't came back yet, I'm gonna, and we've kind of finished up gambling, I'm gonna start trying to distract the bartenders by showing them how they can improve a drink. Oh, sure, what would you like to tell them? So, the the fruity pink drink that they gave us, uh-huh. I'm gonna ask them to start making another one, uh-huh. but I'm gonna take and say that I want it in the same glass that they gave me before. Okay. But I'm gonna take my barrel off and I'm going to dunk the uh, rim in the honey. Oh, nice. And then ask if they have a jar of sugar and then I'm gonna... Oh! And then have them pour it in. You suddenly have uh, Sylvie's full attention and she is very into this and thinks you're awesome. Uh, roll a roll a performance check as you're explaining how to uh, to make this. Uh, Fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> she loves this, and it does. The drink was already. It was. It had some tartness to it, um, and this makes this adds this sweet sugariness that really makes it wonderful. <laughs> and uh, she's like, "I love this." You have to name it. We have to put it on our menu. What should uh, we call this? <laughs> honey, honey suckers. Sugar honey. What do you? What should we call the, it? The sticky leaf. I, I like the. Honey, <laughs> I like the honeysuckle. The honeysuckle. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna call it Leaf's honeysuckle. Like it. And uh, so yeah, the Leaf's honeysuckle will be added to the menu, um, and they're gonna. It, this is normally a. Uh, a free drink that they give out uh, to the gamblers, but it's now on the menu, uh, and it's going to be a. Uh, it's gonna be as a as as, as, there, as she's explaining this to you, a like, two silver piece drink. Yeah, nice. going to slide up beside you and, <laughs> and sort of tap you on the shoulder and say, "Dear Leaf, have you thought about the fact that this could be a real licensing opportunity for you? <laughs> Maybe you should collect a few royalties for." Teaching them what will obviously be one of the hottest and most impressive drinks of the of the town. Rafi and Willie. I don't I don't know how they would uh, handle doing something like that. And she's well, like, I will comp your drinks the rest of the night. Excellent, free more that, jugs for me and that works for me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You know, do you guys have a supply of honey in town? Um, no, we imported from Cross Toe. Cross Toe. Who, uh, who would be the best person to speak to? I, because my hive here has actually gotten to a point where I can, I can split the hive. Oh. Um, so if there is an individual in town that has an interest in beekeeping. Hmm. I think... The best people for that might be either Evangeline Dautre or her wife Lily Dautre. Uh, they are the blacksmith and the leather worker. Uh, they are very um, capable people who enjoy things like that. Okay. Um, I could see either one of them really, really enjoying that. Good to know, good to know. I appreciate that. I'm going to talk to them probably in the morning. Oh! If you do, though, be gentle. Uh, the boy who's missing was their ward. Ah, yes. Not quite their son, but they have been raising him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right. I just I didn't, I didn't think about that. It might not be the best idea, but if you do, at this least... A kidnapping scenario <laughs> where oh. they're, they're holding on to him as ransom to make sure that you know somebody else pays up. Yeah, his uh, his parents were trapeze artists, and um, <laughs> yeah, um, no, actually, his mother did die in childbirth, sadly, uh, and his father is not someone we love to talk about. Maybe it's Isaac. No, the <laughs> boy. Isaac. No, the boy's real father. His name is Jeremiah Parsnip, and uh, he's just no good. He was a local thief. Uh, 
he likes to pretend he runs a thieves guild in our town, but we don't have a thieves guild in our town, so he can't run a thieves guild in our town. Uh, it's just a bunch of runaways and vagrants that he calls a thieves guild. Um, he has a Skithari uh, tattoo. He claims to have been in the Skithari. No one believes him. Uh, he was chased out of town a few years ago. Uh, we see him every now and then. He's just the local drunk, honestly. Uh, he's not really allowed within the, wall, the walls. Occasionally he will sneak in. Uh, I heard a rumor that he there's caves uh, on the edge of the lake that go under the town, and he can sneak in somehow that way. I've never seen them. Uh, that's the local legend, though, is that he lives in the caves with his lost boys, but that's all hmm. just rumor. I, I, he probably has, you know, for all I know, he lives in a mud patch out of town. But. So he must be related to Glorb's family. No, oh, he's the worst. <clears throat> Not Glorb. Glorb, you're wonderful. That's right. <laughs> Glorb is the She best. looks at your water, like your vomit bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you're just the best, Glorb. Everyone loves you. All right. Uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to bed now. That was good. That was going to say that uh, I'd like to rent a room. You have. <laughs> I think you're mistaken. I'd like to rent another room then. Another private room? Absolutely. It'll be another two gold. Not a problem. Okay, we do have one right next to the other one. Is there another room? There are four total uh, suites. Right. And then there are four total right. bunk rooms. I, I, have, I have some science that I have to do, but I need a, a, another room. And she just sighs so big. And just like, be another two gold. It'll be right across the hall. Um, I, uh, I, I, uh, I will let uh, Roth more know. I really mm. have to go take my medicine. <sighs> well, I, I I lean in and I whisper to to the group before we all sort of break away and go go upstairs. I'm like, I hope Isaac comes back. Everything soon. I learned was fucking useless. So good night. <laughs> and I just wander off. <laughs> good good to know. Good to know. I've got quite a headache from all that science. All right, so uh, you're heading to. One of your two My suites. My freshly clean suite where I can sleep in the lamp of luxury versus oh. my stone with vomit, urine, and piss. Nice. <laughs> I'm just leaving that mess as a whole different thing, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I was I made say. my invention successfully, and therefore... All right. And you are heading to your suite. Yes. Uh, what are you doing? I am going to take these drugs, okay. the, the next set of medicine, and, you know, like, this is the special stuff that... Uh, uh, alters me physically, and so uh, I will down this potion and then, like, co- you know, curl up in a corner and then, like, start to, like, exude some sort of slime that covers <laughs> me <laughs> and, and like, just fall asleep for the, the, the night in this chrysalis that's, like, Starts out slimy and then starts to dry out and spread around <laughs> the room and just encase me in a corner like some sort of super gross web. Cool. And then, <laughs> now I'm asleep. He turns into goo inside and reforms. <laughs> so, yeah, you are now in some kind of alien cocoon in the corner of the room. Uh, and you two. Anything else for the evening? I'm just saying that I think my techniques is going to take a bath and then head to bed. Okay, easy enough. I think I technically took mine while we were waiting sure. for him to quiet down, so I'm just going to head to bed. All right, and it's a silver for the bath if you haven't marked it off yet. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, as the evening winds down, uh, you were the only people staying in the hotel except for the other two that were. Uh, no, they passed the night before. No, they passed. They got there early that day. So there's one other bunk room with people and if the rest of the, the place is yours um, we will go ahead and take a break as you guys uh, bed down for the evening Sick. and we will pick back up uh, in the next morning you do get a long rest can I do something in the middle mm-hmm. of the night sure I want to have a candle lit and mm-hmm. the 
window I want cracked, unlocked with the blinds open. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Silver piece out of this. Oh, like you're trying to lower that thing inside? Just to see. What? Silver piece out of this. Silver shiny. Yeah, we could. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave a silver. Easy enough. A beautiful silver pile. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> so. And we're canceled. It's filled with a suspiciously urine like consistency. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> um, I had a joke, but I don't know his name. Ben, ben Shapiro says that this town is actually a desert. So that's. that's yeah. funny. <laughs> it's never like, once there, rain, yeah. It's never once rained in Like, there is no lake below it. Everyone knows. It's dry year round. There we go. Oh um, my god. <laughs> anyway, welcome back uh, to to uh, Tells Me Own. Uh, <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> when, last, when last we left off before the break, uh, the gang had uh, had spent a nice evening um, terrorizing the staff and patrons of uh, the uh, Tickle and Feather. Uh, some, uh, some games of chance were played, some baths were taken, uh, some investigation and questioning was had, uh, there was vomit, there was drinking, uh, there was science. Mm -hmm. Multiple, multiple different occurrences Mm -hmm. of science. Of all of that. Um, Very sticky, gross science. And, uh, they basically rented out most of the place and, uh, have gone to sleep. Uh, so, which brings us, uh, I believe, to the next morning. Uh, you all get a full rest, and it is now morning. The silver is still there in the, the honey trap. So as you, as you get up, the, the, yeah, the honey pot has not been sprung. Uh, window is still where you left it, candle is burnt down, and, uh, there is a silver. A weird nose print. <laughs> <laughs> no, no note that says I'm watching you. I know what you did last summer. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. Okay, I'll take my silver back. It's because we didn't disguise ourselves as Alluring cinnamon men. or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, the day is yours. Uh, you wake up uh, in different degrees of uh, hungover. Uh, let's go to Glorb's room. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Glorb, <laughs> uh, as you bust your way out of your mucus cocoon. <laughs> it's more like a, a, a pulsing, a, one might say a throbbing. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it just kind of uh, turns to a little bit of ash and falls away or peels off like, a, like an old sunburn. <laughs> that had, had turned into a blister. Good. Good, 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 good. I'm glad that's very, very, you are very the blister. Chill. Oh, that poor rope. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm like, that's complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, can I keep on. this? It's like <laughs> shredded and uh, dripping, mm-hmm. moldy somehow, even though it's only been one yeah. night. I'm come out rested <laughs> and ready to go. Way less bloodshot eyes. Uh, try to walk towards the door, and for whatever reason, am there way too fast. Trip over myself. <laughs> moving too fast. Okay. And then kind of get up again, walk around, realize that I don't have any clothes in this uh, room. Well, we can say, if you'd like, that uh, they did tailor or uh, laundry your clothes mm-hmm. and bring them back. Come, come back downstairs yeah. and, and pick up the, the clean clothes. And uh, uh, I, I go straight for uh, Uncle Funkle's room, and I'm like, look, it worked. <laughs> My God, Glorb, look at you. Glorious. The mm-hmm. thickness of those thighs. The <laughs> ruggedness of these calves. Man, you must be quick as lightning, fast as a horse, some might say. And then just uh, almost a gallop in, in a uh, uh, cartoonish way, like speeding around. Uh, on all fours? Not quite on all fours, no. 
doing the but, but definitely way faster than anyone should actually be able to move uh, in, in any amount of uh, time. And, and so as I'm watching as I'm watching Glorf skip around like a horse man man horse <laughs> um, I'm just taking notes like yeah yeah okay, okay watch, watch, watch me jump too <laughs> and just kind of like jump off the balcony <laughs> and I can like into the streets mm-hmm. <laughs> okay still naked uh, no I got some pants and a, a vest on is there a reason uh, make an athletics check as you jump off a second story balcony <laughs> Can I interest you in some acrobatics? Sure. Yeah. Sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you you spring <coughs> over and flip down uh, with your new uh, thicker uh, lower half of your legs. Um, as you come crashing down, uh, you do take two points of damage uh, as you as you land from about twenty feet up. Uh, it looks cool though, and you take off down the street. Uh, tweaked a little bit ankle, but uh, it, you find it as as you get going again. And you are you, you're fast as fuck, boy. Yeah, yeah and and you just, you're just taking off, and uh, yeah, man, very uh, very speedy. <laughs> Half looking around, enjoying my new newfound abilities, hmm. uh, and then looking for Isaac too. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Natural twenty for a total of twenty-two. Nice. Wow! As you uh, run to the uh, the end of the the green common area and go to turn, um, you see uh, on the porch of the. Um, have a name for that? The boat. The porch boat. Um. No. Uh, where and the mayor's the mayor's house basically, which is town hall and the mayor's uh, abode. Uh, you do see um, who you're looking for. You see Isaac. Uh, speaking with what you assume uh, is the mayor. Um, a uh, short, uh, round uh, gnome with uh, gray mutton chops and uh, a top hat on. <laughs> and uh, he is chatting um, with Isaac. I'm getting Scrooge McDuck vibes, but <laughs> as a gnome. <laughs> I'm gonna run back and uh, tell the rest of the party. You know, just kick in the door, uh, jumping through the the, the, the saloon doors <coughs> to the uh, tickle and feather, and just yell out, "I found him! I found him!" My God, found who, Glorm? As I rush Stuart. out, Stuart. I've seen him. Stuart, Isaac, Leaf, <laughs> Nix. <laughs> He's Leave with... a Nix. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, when I when I hear him yelling, I would have ran out in the hall too. Uh, he's with the mayor. All right, it's probably too late. Probably, he probably already told him that uh, Fairthorpe Fairthorpe is coming to cause a civil war or something crazy. Mm-hmm. It'll be fair. <laughs> Rumor also thinks negatively of Fairthorpe. I think they just need to talk things out. I mean, you know, tensions run tensions run deep. Long histories between these rural villages. You know, not not all villages can be as civilized as goblin traps. Well, that may be true. Well, if he's there, he might have to go quick. Yeah, I'm fine making my way down there. My boy. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose we should. All right. Uh, as you head out, a. Uh, it's early morning. Uh, the mist is still burning off in this valley. Um, and uh, you didn't see it last night as you uh, as you were coming in. Uh, but behind the back of the town, uh, 
way off on the horizon, you can actually see the snowy peaks of uh, the beginning of, of a mountain range uh, that goes up into, a, it ends up being a tundra. Um, this is north? Hmm? This is north? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so you actually are uh, looking at... I will get better. I got a new DM binder. It's and, a, uh, looks like a coarse light can. <laughs> yes. Um, With the mayor's house in the foreground. Yeah, it's absolutely correct. That is correct. Um, blue when they get cold. <laughs> I mean, there it is. Gl- Glor definitely turns blue when he gets. Yeah, uh, and that's the <laughs> and you know that's the foothills of uh, it's the UFS tundra U A F A S, which is the territory to the north of your territory, and you realize, man, we really are in the the just outer edges of the boon plates. I've never been this far north. Quite amazing, these mountains that tower. Anything like this where you're from, Leaf? Um, so, Leaf, sorry, I didn't, want to, I didn't mean to step on you. Oh, no, I was going to defer to you. Yeah, so Leaf is from several days uh, west of here and a little bit south. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are kind of borderish, a couple days from the border. Um, I would imagine you're aware of these type of foothills and stuff as well. Okay. Um, that's not exactly where you're from, but you're pretty close to them, so yeah. Enough to see them, and then yeah, when you, the weather's it, it, clear. a day or yeah, a day travel or less, mm-hmm. you can probably see them on the horizon. Gotcha. Sure. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so yeah, you're you're aware of this this area. Yeah, I mean, I I've, I've seen them off in the distance a few times. We go camping, things like that. Usually a day trip out of the way, you can see these mountains. Quite, quite amazing. I guess it's quite the view. I wouldn't mind seeing the views you guys have where you're from. Oh, you've never seen the beautiful insides of a goblin pit. But let me tell you, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Just not? Just, Just not. not. I imagine that the... Is it underground? It never was. It's kind, it's kind <laughs> of... It's kind of. I mean... <laughs> You know, the, the, the vague it could be. descriptions make give it this aura of mysteriousness to it. Good, yeah. Probably overselling it at this point. <laughs> you've, you've, you've hard committed to a vision of a, of a goblin. Just, a, just a imagine, if you will, a, just a pile of gorbs. Occasionally Bloody. Make, making a mess. What, what kind Bloody. of mess are we talking about? Awesome. You know what? Just leave that to your leave that to your own imagination. <laughs> Don't think too deeply about it. <laughs> One where education is now, paramount. Now, now, are we rushing full speed ahead? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then let us let us uh, all charge headlong towards uh, the mayor and uh, Stewart in a very uncontrollably fast fashion mm-hmm. as we chase after Glorb and his. Almost supernatural speed. Okay, you all uh, head that way. Uh, they are also talking now to a third man, uh, and you recognize uh, from his outfit this would be the Boon Guard. Um, he is uh, a, a human with uh, he's balding uh, with uh, reddish hair, uh, a little overweight, um, a lot. Younger than the other Boongar that you've seen, <laughs> uh, but still, you can kind of just just by glancing at him see that he is not their best and brightest, uh, <laughs> and that's probably why he's stationed out here. Um, so as the, as they all as you come charging at them, uh, the Boongard sees two goblins just and you running full speed, faster than everyone else. I'm just yelling out, hey, that guy's full of shit. And uh, <laughs> he, he goes, behind me, behind me, and, and draws his sword and, and gets into a fighting stance. I'm going to yell out, hey, 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 don't you go brandishing your weapons at innocent people who are just overly excitable. Sir, we're just out for a casual morning jog, and we stumbled upon this liar. And I point at Stuart. 
and Isaac is like, uh, I, these are the ones I was talking about that drugged me and pumped me for information. We didn't drug you. I barely made it out with my life. You exactly. had drinks with us. He, yeah, he definitely said he wanted to get, and I quote, fucked up. But you can... And we pressed you for information because you wanted us to break into a business. They can verify, though, that the murder, the, the, the bandit that we had here is murdering people in Farnthorpe. What bandit? Is this the winged creature? Correct. And you can also verify that they are from Farnthorpe. And that we must move now. We can't if, verify that if we are to recover Farron. Sarah and stop this rampage. We have no proof they're from Farenthorpe. This guy sounds like he is quite mm. mad. The people of Farenthorpe think that it came from here. And it was seen here first. What band did you With the here? baker. Still no, from no. the room of of cinnamon. And also, who was it? who died here? Did it kill anyone here? Oh, no, here? no, no, no. It's murdering down there. Oh, who's the bandit from up here, then? The, well, he stole uh, Cinnamon's uh, necklace. Oh, okay. But she says that one was small. Ours was huge. Yeah, but that's so the other it's thing. it's growing. It's feeding. The one that Cinnamon saw was, but she said, was does smaller. It, does it eat costume and not jewelry? big enough. She said maybe <laughs> the size of a, of a halfling. The one that was in Farenthorpe that we or all saw leaf. crushed a person. Perhaps it's the size of... No. no. <laughs> and they just look at the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're making a wild accusation that this is Farenthorpe trying to come here and that you need to act in, a, in an aggressive way toward them. I think, if anything, there's a lot of misunderstandings between your towns and you're both pitting each other against one another and it's going to end in a lot of bloodshed. Or you should turn on your own people and find out who it is. And the mayor uh, tucks both of his hands into like, his vest pockets mm-hmm. And he's like, Flint, put that sword down. Let's talk to him. And he's like, no fast moves. Immediately fast moves. <laughs> 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 <Just> like, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> um, We're going to do with that sword and stab me. <laughs> and then that's the story of how I got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, can you at least confirm that the... That bard troop is down in Farenthorpe. Oh no. Not exactly. No. T D T D T D T D T is down a T. One of the members was beheaded. By some werewolves. Tristan. Well, technically it was oh, werewolf killed by a, a werewolf hunter who was then drug away by those werewolves. <laughs> he was a little rabbit. He looked like he had some bats in him. But yeah, poor Tristan, he's dead. This is and then eaten. This yeah. is shocking news. Eaten. Not by us. Ah, we don't know no, no, sure. no, no, yeah. I thought we burned him. No, uh, oh, yes, we, we did we burn did Tristan. Burn him. The, the they don't even know how they desecrated the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, he have to, you have to well, do a proper burial or else they're going to no, come no, back no, from the dead. Didn't we, we burned the other guy. No, the, no. Other guy the, the other guy was like the other guy was given to the oh. werewolves. Well, how did Tristan Correct. with it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we yeah. we burned them. That's right. And they put, yeah, uh, and then we the gave them in the mouth. The, okay, yeah. I just imagine the guards have watching us have this conversation. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, they right. stuck that thing yeah. in his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it answered and a bunch of questions. He asked, yeah. us, he asked us to burn him and then put take his ashes to. Yeah, you got to do the proper burial. You don't want them coming back. We've seen plenty of them on the farm that. To die in out in the woods, they don't get the mm-hmm. right burial, and then they come yes. back wandering as a shambling corpse. He said, like he said, sail the rising mm-hmm. harp, because you'll never see the Zatarskin skies again. I don't what know does any I, of that mean? I don't know why I have Jewish It's something probably personal or strange, but... He yeah. wanted... He wa- oh, he kept <laughs> crying out for Julius or something. I mean, we'll get around to it eventually. Yeah, we have him in a bag. Um, at this point... Uh, Flint comes over to you and kind of like leans in and he's like, this man that you saw with the werewolves, did he have long 
white hair. Oh yes. And a white mm-hmm. beard. Yes. It was quite was blood stained. Brandishing a silver axe. Yep. Just yeah, one. that's what he killed Tristan with. Okay. Uh, I've I've got to let the Seekers know about this. They're gonna. Who are the Seekers? The Seekers. The Seekers. The Seekers. The interterritorial renowned Seekers. <laughs> the IRS. Oh yes, yes, yes. They are um, a guild of the hunters. game hunters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a well-known uh, seeker in this area. Um, I've only met him a couple times. Mostly a legend. You say he's passed. Uh, well, yeah, he was a giant. We gen. didn't see we him didn't see pass him away. <laughs> yeah. But after he lobbed the head off of our friend, we subdued him, and then we. Whoa, 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 whoa! Like, like, I'm... Tristan was you... okay. I wouldn't necessarily classify him as a friend. And I wouldn't say that we technically we subdued him. him by a he fell off of his of horse, and then we tried to give him medicine. Well, but then he tried he to tried punch to, us to, in the yeah, face. So I held him to the ground, and then we may have given him over to the creatures. How close? This was at the falls. Soapy Falls. Werewolves? No, 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 not werewolves. They were just dire wolves. Yeah. Our friend could speak Uh, with uh, animals. uh, Oh, he's right. I am am confused on that particular point. They killed one of them, so they wanted revenge. The dire wolves wanted revenge? The hunter. And you guys know that the dire wolves wanted revenge because they told speak you. With animals. Oh, I mean, he's having, he's talking to the horses now. You have another friend in town. Um, we're, we're not sure. <laughs> we have friends everywhere. We do. You seem like people who would have lots of good friends. <laughs> we are. We yeah. are a lively bunch. Mm-hmm. We. Might. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of Saro Padnos. He introduces himself to everybody. I have not had the pleasure. Um, well, a pleasure it will be when you do one day meet him. And he leans into you and he's like, <clears throat> you, you are going to want to take that to heck. Um, he runs Hex Hack and Slash, the weapon shop. I... He was he was friends uh, with the man who owned that, and he's gonna want to hear that news. Mm. And how much do you think he'll give us for it? I, I don't know. Hard to be friends with someone who just like, ha- lob the head off another person with no questions mm-hmm. asked. But I think Tristan will want us to keep it. Yeah, like didn't he? He didn't even bother like try to talk to anybody. Just fucking chopped his head off. Wait! Like, I can't believe you raise your children like this. And people saying goblins are on I know. I just had a bad thing and a good thing happened in the last 10 seconds while you're talking. <laughs> Alright. Okay. I'm good. Was that the guard or was that you? Me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I what the guard. thought I hadn't named the guy with the white hair and white beard. Then. So I made a name up. Then found the name, realized it was a much better name. I was like, dang, I wish I would have just done that. Then realized I don't think you would ask the name. Did I say it out loud? No. 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 I didn't think so. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Avoided the, ca- the canon of a not that great name. <clears throat> All right. So, anyway, uh, Isaac is uh, speaking in hushed ter- tones to the mayor and saying, all I'm saying is we put together a little party, we head down, if we leave by tonight, we can be there by the time their fair starts. So we have a lot of things going on, we can infiltrate, we can find Sarah, we can slip back out. If things go south, we should have enough people that we can like force our way out or force our way in to get her, but I think we just do a quick strike party, but we gotta leave this evening. You need to chill out, man. Man, you are you are murder crazy. Yeah, I think. No, I'm not saying we murder Listen, anybody. Hey, I'm saying I found enough evidence that we need to go down there and get Sarah. You found a lot of assumptions, circumstantial evidence. Like not even that. 
You just I, made some shit up and then... I would I would like your itemized list of deductions so that I may critique them on a point by point basis. The Jolly Baker was in our town. Correct. Yes. Because you refused to let his son nearby. Because his son was really creepy towards Sarah and was very upset that she was promised to someone else. And his, it was for her safety. And his father said that he needed to stay away from her because she was the bad news. Then the boy that we hired to take the provisions down to Farenthorpe went missing the day the Jolly Baker came here. Hasn't been seen since. So you hired was that Morbin? That's, Correct. That, that's Gorbin? Okay. Correct. Vorbin. Vorbin Parsnip. Okay. Has been missing since the day the Jolly Baker was here. Cool. He was hired to replace the Jolly Baker's son to bring the goods back and forth. But I thought the Jolly Baker brought the goods back. Well, he, he did came on a Vorbin never showed up. That's not true. He wasn't supposed to show up. He was supposed to leave the day the Jolly Baker got here. Hmm. See, if we had just done what he originally wanted and break a felonious crime, there's no way that we can't solve one crime with another crime. I was just like, yeah, we, yes. I tried to get them to break in and look for either one of them. And now the trail might have gone cold. We have to get well, back. Well, we did find the son of the baker in the bakery. Yeah, that's where he lives. But okay. there wasn't anyone else there. He also we went. We haven't. No, you the haven't son, investigated. The son also witnessed the murder that went on. You investigated? Yeah. I pre I'm a great investigator. <laughs> Unlike. Uh, uh, Wait, after I left, how did you get here so fast then? I'm also very fast. Did you not just see? He is fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> He's I mean, not alive. come on. Well, Pay attention. I thought you were a detective. Was or or was what you really is, or is just some guy that's going to clean up my vomit. Was Vorbin supposed to stop Denny Farts on the way there? No. Vor well, he would have had to stop to sleep one night, but he I don't... probably just joined the gang because he's got terrible parents. You're yeah. not wrong. That his dad's a piece of shit. Did, did Vorbin? Did Vorbin have a horse? You're pretty good detectives. You already know that. Yep. Doesn't everyone know that? His so, dad. His dad lives in a cave down by the river. You have been here for like twelve hours. You already know. And spent nine of them drunk as a skunk. <laughs> I, yeah, and you already know that I'm cleaning up your vomit. Yeah. Today, you already know. That his father lives in a cave. That your name's actually Isaac, not Stuart. <laughs> that is true. Hmm. Yeah. He's like, I mean, bravo all you're, around! You're bravo. very bad at your job that you want. <laughs> well, I just think that maybe we like, can help each other, you know? Like this guy over here is for the boom play, or the boom guard is probably better than you. I, I am. It's literally my job. <laughs> I'm 100%. It's like, he's not. He's lazy. It's like, I'm not lazy. I mean, you're probably lazy, too. Yeah, how could you have not solved two disappearances? It's an ongoing investigation. I haven't heard you on. even make a single claim of what's happening here. I am still... Also, gathering... I gotta say, it's a little shameful that one person's worth 40 gold more than the other. Well, the mother uh, put the extra 60 in. It's 40 from the town on both, but uh, Sarah's mother, uh, who, who uh, is named probably Heather... Um, Heather, uh, Miss, Miss Sandvik, um, put the, uh, extra, extra gold in. Hmm. She's Wonderful. very distraught. What kind of transportation did Orban have? Uh, we were gonna give him, uh, a cart and a horse. Okay, so we saw no carts and we saw no horses on our way back up here. But there was one stolen. From where? Remember the farmer's? Oh yeah, the mm -hmm. farmers. But that, but that was just a horse, not a cart. No, right? no it, cart was, too. it was a cart. Mm -hmm. oh. But that would be unrelated to the one because he would have already had. Yeah, a this cart would have been horse. days before that Orban was supposed to come down. Right. Come on, Cedar. Like, why are you listening? Did, to are you that? saying he was supposed to be given? So he, he never, never left. Well, he let, He's gone. But the horse and cart and goods are still here. Okay, so I have a proposal. Perhaps we take the cart and the horse and the supplies down to Barrenthorpe. 
and then never come back to Rune Lord. <laughs> because this place does kind of suck. I, I have a counter offer. <laughs> and the mayor is like whispering. Uh, and, and is it the mayor that has the counter offer? No. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, Isaac. Isaac says, Help me tie up a dead end. Join me in finding the father and making sure his son didn't join his stupid thieves guild. And we'll check that off the list. Do you want well, to the caves? I would, I, I would like to point out one thing. It's tying up loose ends, not dead ends. Because if you tie up a dead end... It gets they're squishy. already dead. You know, there's nothing. They're coming over the loose. Yeah. What, what, what would you do to a dead end? Well, Vorbin has been missing a longer. You would cut it off with a knife. You'd put it in a tub with acid and make sure that no one really? would I, ever find it again. Knowing you, I thought you'd just eat it. Mm. Depends on what it was made yeah. <laughs> Well, this sounds like I, a person. I don't, like, I could win that 40-gallon jug challenge, but I don't know that I could eat a full human. Well... We should gather some provisions, and I think I think we could probably investigate in a cave near the lake. Nothing nothing says fun like a day in the wilderness. Besides, two people going missing. There's somebody who's trying to run a thieves guild in town. Most likely, I feel like they're down there. I mean, they would have ransomed them by now if they were Listen, actually kidding. Everybody says thieves. Or they're trying to hold. Or they're trying to so wait and see if the price it, will go up. It's not the thieves' guild. It's the ICC that are the real problem. I don't disagree with this. <laughs> and they all turn and they're like, "What do you know of the ICC?" Uh, uh he doesn't know much. He said, you know, you know. I'm just going <laughs> to toss out uh, Bonk's uh, badge. And they're like, "Oh." It's almost like somebody sent these people. Down to Ferenthor on a, on a, a mission of uh, likely sabotage. Sabotage and uh, you know just some bad ideas. They you were know, the vibes they, were off. Yeah, for sure. They seem visibly confused. Did uh, you know him? This is just an ICC badge. Bonk. Bog and peanut. And peanut. And so they 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 describe them. They're like, are they the two gnomes with the the hats yep. and the scar mm-hmm. and the glasses? One had a pickaxe, cyber arm. We metal arm denied them entry into our town a few weeks back. That was, good one put a pickaxe in me. Yeah, that's then, exactly what we were kind of. We are one of the last. They're like it's. We understand that we're on the frontier here, on the edge uh, uh, of the Boon Plates, but we are not the Forest Lands or the Tundra, and we will not bow to the ICC. So you had nothing to do with them getting sent there and their terrible crimes? Mm, did they commit terrible crimes? In yes. The like I said, one put a pickaxe through my shoulder. Well, I can say that I really hope that Farenthorp. Do you know if the ICC has a foothold in Farenthorp? Are Not they a foothold? They're Not walking anymore. to get in. They're mostly on their way to a foothold. Remember, they're trying. They almost got one. Sarah, Sarah was very, very passionate about us not eating that guy's face. Farenthorp doesn't seem to want them either, though. Yeah, so, we have no desire. If there's one thing that between Runemore and Farenthorpe that you share in common that I think could be a way to maybe quell some of the tensions is that you both seem to not want the ICC around. That might be something worth exploring. Either. As a way to build camaraderie between the towns. Establish a you know, trading agreement that's uh, run by more than 16 year old teenage boys. Surely Bonk might still be back there by now. Uh, depends on yeah. How right now, fast Sarah, he wants. Sarah and Turnip and the other one, they're all probably just hanging out Parsnip? in town Parsnip. somewhere, just doing drugs in caves. Yeah, 
you, you're gonna bust up a rave in a cave. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you think? Shall we? That'd shall we proceed with our cave. investigation? Sir Stewart here has agreed to pay us the tiny sum of five gold each to go into that cave. Only five gold? After what you did to us? What? I what did I do to you? You ran away and you left us holding you the bag. You dr- drove your, a horse all crimes. through the night. We were worried sick. Everybody We've been trying that to make we sure that you were safe I had this to warn time. this town well, on what was going on sorry. down there, so we could get there before their fair starts. Sure. As soon as a murder happens, you run away. Yes. Leaving us the the prime suspects. I was told to go and down we, there and find out what was going on. Well, I you found didn't do it. the teeny 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 <laughs> tea. You I didn't found do it. the same creature that has been. No, you didn't find anything. You found some stories about it, and then you made some shit up. I and then you left town, leaving us holding the bag. The jolly baker came to town lying. This is all. Listen, there's too many things keep, going on. In are Terrence things behind all like beyond reasonable doubt that they're after you? Because it sounds to me just like a lot of miscommunications are happening. Our children are missing. I don't go to space. Yes. Two people are dead just, in Farnthorpe. Well, our children aren't falling out of the sky on them. Where are our children? I mean, they, there might have been the kids falling out of the sky on them. We just don't know enough. Now Sounds, saying, there's loss on both sides, and I don't think you should blame the other for it. Now I I, I sort of sidle over to the uh, to the mayor and uh, mm-hmm. you know like try to put my arm around him, but then I realize he's a gnome, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, hot, mayor. <laughs> um, do you really want this enterprising individual to go? Headlong charging into a cave filled with possible thieves and maybe other unsavory elements, would you really think that he would be safe? My friends and I, I think, have a much better chance, but, you know, we need supplies. We spent most of our money on drinks last night. Would you be willing to hire us as an official envoy of the town to at least investigate and make safe the caves? And if there is an unsavory element of thieves below... Perhaps we could arrest them and bring them to justice since the golden tip, the golden one here, doesn't seem to be too interested in laying down the law. Isaac should come with. I don't trust, no offense, that while we're gone, he's going to use that time to build up a group of people to go raid Farnthor. My, if you wish to take him, then I leave him in your care. Um, I need two checks from you. Hey, uh, checks! One. I thought I'm, you wanted money. I need a uh, persuasion check with advantage. Ooh. Uh, I'm terrible. using with that. big words that made the mayor feel important. Ooh, I rolled great. How about an 18? Nice. And two, I need a perception check. Ooh, another thing I suck at. Uh, middle of the road, 11. Okay. Um, so as you are talking to him, he's like, okay, um, five gold each uh, if you bring back the boy's father alive. What if he's already dead? Okay, we're dead. <laughs> uh, just to prove that you did go down there, find uh, them, and he can attest to the fact that his son is not there. Five gold each if he's alive. Four gold each if he's dead. We don't Uh, don't really know. know. Okay. Okay. And uh, I will give you each a gold now for provisions. Wonderful. And you think the climbing shop has the necessary gear for a little bit of cave climbing? Yeah, absolutely. They'll they'll have it. And anything they don't have, uh, heck and hex, hex and slash, hack and slash will for sure. Works for me. All right. Still want Isaac to come with. Isaac, yeah, I'm happy to. Happy to. Great. Isaac, stick to this fluffy bunny butt. Oh, wait. Shopping? No, I'm not, I'm not shopping with no, you. No, you, you to heard Lee. Spelunk. Come with us. How about we meet at noon at the gate? Yeah, you've got a best I think you should. I'd prefer if you come I do have a the best whole time with us. 
Listen, if I get back to my room and it's not spotless, I do have turn down service to do this point. I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Um, <laughs> I have a brand new uh, batch of cleaner I'm dying to try out. Let the poor man work first. Yes. Fine, but if I hear that you were anywhere other than your job, which I will check up on, we're going to have some words later. You're a scary bunny. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got that, uh, that, that fire that burns beneath <laughs> his... his uh, <laughs> cuddly exterior. <laughs> All right. So uh, he agrees to meet you at noon at the front gate. You guys have a couple hours to to peruse the town and then buy supplies. Maybe we need to get a tooth filer for the money. Mm. To make his teeth sharper. You've got that f- fangs in you. <laughs> you've got, you've got in quite you, a bit of goblin in you. Climbing store? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yes, Climbing store? Climbing store? As hack and slash. I have no hack and slash in Laura's. I'd like to hit up the blacksmith. Laura's Hallmark. Laura's Hallmark. <laughs> Laura's Hallmark. <laughs> it's a Laura La- Palmer. I'm like, Lyra's yeah, Illuminancy. <laughs> so, all right, where so first? So what? Um, hack and er, climb. Everybody who? Okay, uh, I'm gonna do a quick survey of everyone here. All right, raise your hand if you have rope. Oh. Uh, everybody have rope? I think so. Everybody have pitons, pythons. Oh, batons! Steel <laughs> spikes you drive into the stone and or wood. Nope. Let me check a paper. A hammer. I have a hammer. I have a several, this rich several pitons, uh, hemp and rope. I have a tinder box for fire. And most importantly, I have a jug that makes four gallons of beer. Good thing I got torches in no room. <laughs> well, you have those wings. Flap, flap. Those are only good for going Jim, down. the Dungeoneers. Those are only good yes. for what? <laughs> going down. Going so down. Said. Going down. We're in the right town. For <laughs> on this town, yes. This town is gonna get gone down on. Okay, so <laughs> going to the store then? Yes, I just believe that we should each have our own at least one serving of rope. So how many ropes do we need? At least one apiece. I mean, you know, we I, don't know how deep these caves yeah, are. I have, a, I have a rope, you have a rope. I also I also have the dungeon here, so I have rope. I mean, I think we all want to just, you know, rappel down at the same time. Or, you know, what, Nick, if, what if we need more than one rope? So we've got four ropes, right? Uh, Nick's, uh, I need three one. ropes. Nyx needs rope. So what does uh, the climbing store have for sale? And the, the fucking janitor can get his own damn rope. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of on his own. He, he chose not to come with us to get adventuring supplies. Now, I would pitch I would pitch the uh, the concept to Lance, the thing that I use to simplify this kind of micromanagement of random shit, mm-hmm. is the idea of adventure supplies, which is where you basically you spent, uh, you know, one gold for a charge of adventure supplies, which... Basically, will contain anything that you need for adventuring as like an offhand thing, you know. Like, oh, I'm gonna spend an adventuring charge because so that I have rope and shit. You know? Well, I would say nice. that, except for there are people at the table who uh, listed shopping as one of their favorite things. Hey, it's one of my favorite things. I just don't know. If it's <laughs> uh, rope shopping is one of our favorite things. <laughs> I also I, I prefer not to do it that way just because a lot of things can be reused mm-hmm. and just making it being I expend a charge and yeah. then you have to buy to refill it when there's things that you can salvage and reuse I oh yeah fair hard. I just mean it's one of those things where it's like oh god dang it you know you yeah. have the no, I, I get expanding it. pole and you're like what the fuck would I have that <laughs> alright so you're heading uh, to the adventuring store <laughs> a tough climb um it is ran by a half elf named Adamar. Uh, super enthusiastic fellow, happy to help you out. Excited that you're going to go spelunking. Um, usually, when people come here for climbing gear, it's because they're trying to climb uh, up uh, into the UFOS uh, tundra. Uh, so he's like, "Oh man, down! That's a whole different ball game." Uh, Not used to going down, are you? Uh, I heard that it's uh, something that uh, is pretty popular amongst uh, Kinku these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> he has a uh, hemp and rope, uh, 50 feet for two gold. That's the most expensive rope I've ever seen. 
Well, you, you know, uh, supplies up through this way are pretty uh, pretty tight. So we have to import it from cross towing. Things get tight when you're going down, I guess. Did you throw in some other stuff with that? <laughs> uh, what are you looking for? Uh, more stuff that'll make the climb easy. You got a hammer. <laughs> uh, I, I, fortunately, I have one of those already. Hey, bro, I don't know shit about climbing, okay? <laughs> Like, tell, uh, me, tell me what, what you would recommend for a starting climber. We got uh, some, some, uh, some, some pittons. Pitons, pit some birds, whatever they're called. Pitons. Pitons. Could you throw those in with, for the two gold? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll throw in, I'll throw in five. Phew. Uh, he also has... Uh... As far as uh, other things go besides hammers and rope, he has a uh, hand axe, five gold, uh, daggers for two gold apiece. He has 10 feet of chain uh, for three gold. He has crowbars for a gold piece and a grappling hook for three Ooh, gold. Ooh, Gorb, do you have a crowbar? I don't have a crowbar. I purchased, I purchased the uh, crowbar and I gift it to Gorb. All right. And I say, one gold. I know you've always wanted one of these. I want that grappling hook. Three gold. Grappling. Yes. You said that crowbar was what, one gold? Yep. He also has um, a hooded lantern and one uh, bullseye lantern. Are those a gold apiece? Oh uh, no. The bullseye lantern is 15 gold. Oh, geez. And the hooded lantern is 8 gold. Yeah, lanterns are quite expensive, so if you can't see in the dark like some people. It's okay, I got torches for us. I have torches as well. Yeah, I think I have a torch too. Oh, all right. Yeah, I've got ten. Well, enjoy your spelunking. Uh, make sure you all tie together to each other, uh, and you know, don't leave anybody behind. Slow and steady. Uh, you know, don't uh, blindly charge in somewhere. We're don't gonna, you tell me what we're gonna get. We're gonna get to this cave thing, and it's gonna be like literally like just like a hole in the wall, <laughs> just jacked out for the gear. Uh huh. Is that Already attached to a rope, or is it literally no, it's just, just the hook? hook. Okay. Yeah. yeah you just tie it to your rope. Iron, iron hook. Yep. Okay. He throws it. He's like, oh, that wasn't attached to shit. Wasn't oh, it? damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's when uh, uh, Nyx has the uh, mage hand. You know, he could just go grab it out of the, the ditch. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that it for a, a tough climb? So. Unless he has anything uh, super out of the ordinary. Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, next to it is uh, Auntie's Groceries and Mother's Pie. Uh, and then further down the street is uh, the Blacksmith and the Leather Worker and Hex Hack and Slash. I want to hit up all of them. So Hack and Slash, then Blacksmith slash Leather Worker and couple? Yep. So remember not to talk about the sun. Well, I was actually going to say we're going and it might be worth letting them know we're looking for them. So as you head yeah. inner uh, hex hack and slash, it's a small weapon shop. It's uh, basically the blacksmith, the leather worker, and the weapon shop are all a connected building. Uh, they just look like they've been divided inside. Uh, heck is a uh, large orc, um, and uh, he's like, oh, hello, hello. Come in, come in, come in, come in. And Hi. I, I immediately like uh, shriek like a fat girl. I'm like, ah, oh, it's another. It's another green Look at this skin. tiny, tiny, mm. tiny goblin. I love you guys. Oh, oh, it's so good too. to see. I don't see goblins up here very often. It's I so have, great being here. I haven't seen a green skin besides Glorb in months. I'm going to talk to him in orc. Oh, mm. you got Glorbin. Mm. <laughs> orc in man Glorb. <laughs> oh, goblin. And just tell him where we're going. And then just start to ramble off about ICCE, what they were doing in the South oh, South. Fuck those guys. They're never mm. coming in here. And I'll tell you another thing, too. Uh, you know, if they do, and then he just starts enthusiastically describing how he's going to murder them. <laughs> like, yes. just like, I'm gonna fucking, and I'll take that arm off and beat the other one with his fucking arm, right? And then the first one's arm's going right up his ass. And just, yeah. 
like just all right. Now I love this and, and, super long description. And, and, and the whole time, I'm just like Glorb did that, <laughs> and Glorb did that too. <laughs> and then he's like, "Hold on!" And he goes and gets like a battle axe and just brings it up. He's like, "Now, when I fucking killed, I killed six dudes with this axe." And, and then just starts telling you like and he's like swinging it around and shit, and like, gets it stuck in the counter for a second, pulls it back off. And, uh, dangerous man, but very cool. <laughs> Um, he's legit. Some would say too legit. After, he, after he's with his speech, yeah, I'll go up to him and be like, "So, what do you know about this?" And so, uh, catch him with that. Oh, oh, oh no! There's only one reason you have this. The fact that he beheaded our friend. <laughs> that sounds like him. Is that how he went out? Technically, he cut motherfuckers' away. heads off. Technically, he was drugged away by a pack of ravening werewolves. No, dire wolves. Dire wolves. Listen, uh, I don't know that there's much no difference. Confused. There's not a dire wolf on earth that could have could have killed what him. Was I'll tell you that. What about yeah. sixteen yeah. dire wolves <laughs> yeah. that also ride horses? Also, he was running around <laughs> half naked. He <laughs> just had skins. <laughs> yeah. like, he wasn't tough enough. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like him. Uh, he did kill one of our. Acquaintances. Well, I'm a rapid, a rapid a dismemberment. Rapper. Did he have an unplanned ejection of viscera? Did he have it coming? Yes. I mean, probably. Oh, I mean, oh, Tristan? Tristan? No. I mean, not from this guy in particular, but generally speaking, maybe. It wasn't uh... He didn't pay his tab, so that's liable to get your head chopped off. No. This here, it's called a wolf vert half hatchet. Uh, it's a pretty rare hand axe, uh, made out of steel. Any creature not in its true form must succeed uh, a saving throw or revert back to its true form. Hmm. Uh, it's Wild Bill Rody's hatchet, that's for sure. Wild so that's Bill his Rody. name. Wild Bill Rody. True hunter. Big game hunter, artifact hunter. Man had stories. You live around here? Not anymore. <laughs> he uh, mostly lived right at the borderland between uh, layer of forests and uh, the boot plates. He came into civilization here every now and then to resupply up, but uh, you know, kind of lived off the land. Well, I tell you, when you when you go to write this man's obituary or his memorial after all those titles I think he earned a new one Bard Decapitator oh that's good man fuck a bard you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, well what are you doing with it I, I, you, I mean if you, if you killed him you can keep it I guess uh, if not I don't have much money on me but his brother Blackjack Bendetti he'd want that back that sounds like a man who would shoot you in the nuts to get his axe back. He's, uh, if you ever find yourself near Cattle Crossing, that's the last time I saw Blackjack was way out there. I'm sure he'd give you a pretty penny for it or you know, keep it and cut Bard's heads uh, off with yeah. it, I guess. That's, uh, we could definitely rename it into the Bard, Bard Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> Or the or the Tristan Tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like it. Yeah, for now I think we'll just keep it. Alright, well. Can you use a little adventure? You wouldn't happen to have any uh Can you use axes? Blunted arrows, would you? Blunted like arrow. Yeah, axis. something more <laughs> Rounded I mean, tip we'll that would okay. deal some nice bludgeoning that wouldn't kill, kill outright. Like, well, well, I'll tell you what, you could buy some too. regular yeah. arrows yeah. and then uh, you can uh, take them take them over uh, to uh, Jesus Christ. Where am I looking at? Hold on. Where am I looking at? Hold on. Where am I looking at? Hold on. Evangeline? Yep, yep, yep. Ward. Oh, there it is. Go yeah, uh, the blacksmith, Evangeline, right so next door, and she could uh, mm. scrape them down for you. Well, yeah. Sure. Uh, how much for the arrows? Oh. Then they get pretty good. I uh, give you 20 arrows for two gold. Whew. See, 
But this is why I say we just everyone should flatten the economy and nothing but gold. They're artisanal. They're <laughs> just, uh, made made here, but uh, me and Evangeline make them together. Absolutely delightful. Hmm. Um. How much did we say? Uh, Ten silver per one gold. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll give him forty silver and take forty. Okay. Yep. Uh, and yep, no problem. He does, he, he does have that much. I will I will take twenty. Uh, hold on one second. You're gonna have to buy him. Gonna have to buy him from Leaf, and he's gonna charge. Uh, he has twelve more. Two gold. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so uh, that'll just be you know. One gold and two silver. Uh, you bought you bought the whole town out of out of arrows. Congratulations. I'm, well, we're going adventuring. It gives me Adam, something to do. Sir Adamar, fine orc. Do you know where I could purchase many vials, glass vials? Oh, empty ones. I was waiting for of. No, just vials. Uh, I have concoctions that need yeah. distillation. <sighs> Little glass vials. He's little so good at vials. it. Uh, I would say hmm, maybe the alchemist shop of some sort. Otherwise, not here. We may need to find a beer bottle. The only alchemist South. shops anywhere in the west, uh, the the whole eastern part of of, uh, of Boon Plates would be would be cross toe, and I'd okay, say. Okay, then how about? Mason jars, or yeah, uh, Auntie's groceries would have that. Sure, have the glass vials. Even if, well. even if those jars are filled with vegetables that I can pour on the ground. Right, <laughs> I'll that's, take that's them. what it's what all you do with vegetables. What, exactly. well, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Y- y'all interested in any weapons? You need weapons? Who needs weapons? I am a weapon. Just bought like all the arrows you got. No, like real weapons, like I, you know, I, I'm weapons, a, battle axes, glaives, great swords. I mostly just, you know, mobs. I mostly just throw pebbles at people till their heads explode. I think I got this beautiful hand axe. You familiar with uh, with uh, tuning to weapons, son? You should learn to attune to weapons. I bet you that one would, uh, I think you can't change a beast back to its normal form unless you're attuned to it. Otherwise, it's just a pretty axe. Yeah, I mean, it'll still do its job. You could, you could still cut a man's head off. <laughs> Rest in peace, Tristan. <laughs> I'm gonna wander over to Evangeline. Do you All think right. that that was Tristan's real form? I mean, he did get his head cut off, and he didn't change. So, it must be I know, different. but like maybe not having a head. <laughs> that was, uh, was his real form. <laughs> Fair enough. That is a that is a smart observation. Book. All right. Well, if you're not spending money, get the fuck out of my shop. Adios. Uh, uh, heading over to. I mean, I'll feed her same. <laughs> um, heading over to Evangeline. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, short brown hair, super badass, like, just muscly and thick and, like, very Sarah Connor looking. You know, <laughs> she's a blacksmith, so she's hammering something with a fire at all times. Uh, 24 hours a day waiting to talk to someone, just <laughs> clanking the same piece of metal forever. Blank. Oh, thank God you're here. I haven't <laughs> taken a break in nine years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I built this with a in a cave with a box of scraps. Um, it's so, still a box of scraps, but yeah, it's all together now. Put it together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, she is. Uh, she's working on smelting uh, some sweet iron. Uh, and she stops and is like, "Oh, hello." Uh, howdy. Uh, your partner in the other store there, Heck. Lily. Oh, Heck. He uh, was letting me know that you'd be the person to talk to about maybe uh, wearing down these arrow tips, making them more blunted so they're not as oh. lethal. Ugh, why would you like practicing? Um, or if we wanted to, you know, subdue someone without killing them. Yeah, I could grind them down, or I could cork them. Whatever, whatever works. Sure, sure. I think grinding them down keeps them kind of the same weight 
more than corking them, we're gonna make, make it weird. Okay, oh, right. that so, works. Uh, could we do 15 of them? Yeah, sure. Um, it take me like a minute or two. Uh, do you want? Can you, you got a silver for it? Is that, sure. Okay. And yeah, she just gets her uh, like a just heats them all up and just hammers a little bit on each one, just taps them into more of a flat thing. Um, takes a minute or two. And she's like, so you guys, uh, you here for the uh, for the feast and festival, or? No, it sounds pretty boring. We're here to hunt down some children. We, I'm sorry, what? Not hunt, feast is the wrong term. We came into town, we heard <laughs> Just about- Just like I see a tear like start forming in her eye. We heard about Sarah. Little visible shake to her hand. <laughs> we heard about Forbin. And we're working with the town guard to try to find them. We're gonna get those oh, well, I really, and drag them back. I really appreciate that. You know, with I like Sarah, and I think that she's a wonderful girl, and I hope they return safely. But with the news of her disappearance and how important she is, it, Vorbin's disappearance just doesn't seem to matter. You know, because of his past, everyone just assumes he ran off. And I know him better than that. You know, if he wasn't in the tickle and feather. Helping them out, he'd be here helping us out. He he doesn't wander off. He's a good boy. So, anything you can do to help, uh, you know. And if if you do find him and you can bring him back to me safely, I can. I don't have much money, but maybe I can get help get you a weapon if you need it, or modify your weapons or something. What would be best for smacking a teenager over the head and dragging them back? Well, don't smack my teenager over the head. Uh, He's thinking more for sex. Despite what Glorm is saying in his uncouth manner, I want to assure you, we will bring back this boy. And she Dead like, or alive. She goes alive. out. Any means necessary. Alive. Alive. Uh, she goes over and gets you uh, Whatever it takes. a pair of uh, iron... Um, Manacles that manacle the hands and chain to the feet, and she's like, "Here, cool. All right. That would be the safest uh, is this a way." Sex thing or? to subdue <laughs> someone. Oh, oh, I don't. Oh, oh, oh for oh, I thought. Was... <laughs> get on, get, get, get on the couch. <laughs> I, I also uh, I wanted to talk to you. Um, I, I was asking around uh, who would be the best person in town for this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I have a hive, a beehive. I, I oh, really? Oh, wow! Um, and the hive has reached a point where it's time to split too, too many. Uh huh. Um, and you were actually recommended by Sylvie. Oh. Uh, as maybe the you or your your partner would be the the preferred people to maybe take on. Oh hive. my gosh! Um, I thought it could be maybe something that you could do. Find some catharsis in while these times well, are troubling and uh, it can also maybe help you get some more coin coming in it's not that it's not that difficult a hobby uh it's really rewarding too so yeah she calls she calls lily lily and uh lily comes in long uh really light brown uh hair mm-hmm. um and kind of pulled back and they introduce and, and lily's super into it as well and uh they're like, yeah, so let's just forget the, the silver for these arrows, first off. Uh, oh. Don't, don't even worry about it. Oh, okay. Um, and, yeah, what do you... Do you want us to just set aside a little bit of the, the profit for you if you come back through? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, that, that'd be fine. Okay, yeah. The um, answer for him. And, I, and I know. Lily's like, do you guys think you could actually... Find him and, and bring him back. That's Corbin? the hope. We will try. It's, we will try our yeah. best. Yeah, That's the best I'm gonna say. Sarah, we're gonna run him down. <laughs> we're gonna find them. I don't. And we're gonna try we're gonna, our best gonna, to make sure that they are safe and sound. We are gonna track them to the ends of the city limits. Do you have anything would gag them? We don't need to gag them. <laughs> and uh, the. Uh, uh, Lily, who is a leather worker, <laughs> uh, <laughs> goes and, and gets you just like a simple uh, rawhide, like thing that you can tie. Just like, All right, I'm gonna need two for both kids. For both kids. And it goes back and gets you. She's like, "Thank you for all that you're doing." 
and, and you now have like and two now, leather strips. Now you have, but now you have leather mouse gags and chains. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any? Do you have any horse crops back there? <laughs> and, uh, Just in case we need to spur our horses to greater action. <laughs> I know that he wanted to go to that other shop too, so I figure maybe while he heads over there, I'll split the hive in like their backyard, like a sure. tree with like a little garden. Okay, yeah. And kind of show, like, just give them the basics. Yeah, of, like, what they yeah. Have. Lily, Lily, go with you. Um, she actually offers you uh, some fresh milk from their goat. If you uh-huh. like some sure. Fresh milk. Yes, she gives you a, a pint of fresh goat's milk uh, from this morning. Uh, and uh, they have a little uh, be- just a little backyard that uh, would be big enough. There's a couple trees and, and, and stuff. And she's like, yeah, we could maybe set up back here. And yeah, so you guys do that. Uh, and where else are we going? I need to go to the grocery store to dump out a bunch of vegetables. <laughs> okay. So uh, as you walk in, uh, it's a small grocery store, uh, only a couple aisles. Uh, there's a sweet elderly halfling there named Beatrice. Uh, and shopping in the store uh, are two more orcs. Um, oh, there's so many green skins. Gorm, <laughs> we should consider moving here, except for the fact that there's so many goddamn gnomes. This is not a good place. <laughs> and they're just like... I don't know they maintain their property value. <laughs> they're picking up melons and just like knocking on them lightly and sniffing them and talking about it to each other. And I like, put that down. What would your ancestors think of you sniffing a melon like that? Like, we're just here to shop. We're shoppers shopping at this shopping oh, shop. Oh, they're shop shopping. Okay, I understand. I approached the uh, the fine uh, owner of this establishment yeah. and introduced myself as uh, the fine inventor, Uncle Funko. And I'm here to purchase as many glass vials or jars that you can spare. Feel Preferably good. empty. As much rat bait as we can get. But I do need lids. And she's like, sassafras. Uh, turnips? <laughs> oh, you want glass vials. Um, Daisies. Sure, yeah, I can get you some bottles. Um, Parsnips. And both of the orcs are like, and just kind of like go outside of the store and just or, uh, exit. The, the store. Mm, they're and, definitely just shopping here, that's for sure. And uh, so she, uh, she's like, uh, hold on a minute and, and goes in the back and comes out with a uh, little wooden crate with six uh, little uh, jar, empty jars. And she's like, will this uh, do you? Mm, perfect, perfect. And I'm just sort of like, look at the jars and I'm like, how much is it per, per jar? Uh, we can say a silver for the six. A silver for six? Now that's a bargain. And I slide, I'm just going to slide her one whole gold, gold coin over and say, you know, so that you can find your sassafras in the future. And she's like, Art. And then I just <laughs> say, If you're Boone's guard, you got to tell me you're Boone's guard. That's the <laughs> uh, You mean those weird, those weirdo dudes out there, yeah. that cop ass copper out there? I don't like them cops. We're actually going to uh, go rescue some kids because we're tired of these cops sucking so bad. Are you looking to party? <laughs> Glorm! Yes! Glorm is always looking to party. I try to remain party neutral as often as possible. Is this your first time here? Fuck no. Yes. I mean, here? Yeah. Partying? This is, no. This is our first time here, but it's definitely not our first here time. Here in the home. grocery store? Yes, I've never mm-hmm. been to your fine establishment. I see there aren't as many vegetables as I was afraid of. Okay. So, if you're down to party, when I say sassafras, you say melanin. Melanin? Melon? Melanin. Like the skin pigment? That's correct. Oh, okay. At this point, I walk in after being done showing them. <laughs> you Thank you for coming to my fine establishment. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. And you also notice every time someone new comes in, she goes from like just a fine old lady who's like standing up straight to like kind of hunched and older each time. Ah. And she's like, well, thanks for coming Leaf. in. They said they're having a special on vegetables. Oh, good. Is this, is this she has she has a she has a very a very nice collection here, but she doesn't know anything about vegetables. 
She's just a an establishment provider. I figured I would, you know, maybe see if I could pick up some tips for you. But nope, nothing here. I'm just gonna take my jars and I'm just gonna waggle on out of here. All right, have a good day. Thank you for the tip. Bye, Miss. Bye. Oh, what was your name again? I didn't even think Beatrice. to Beatrice. Bye, Beatrice. I'm Funkle, and this is once again Glow Up the Party Machine. Woo! Okay, bye. <laughs> How can I help you, Bunny? I was just coming to see my friends. I was. Oh, are you, is he with you? With you? Is he cool? No. Okay. Alright, have a good day. It just like starts waddling back to the party. I was trying I was trying to signal her like Okay, hey, well, man. you know, I know you like vegetables, we're getting out of here. I was hoping she'd pick up on the fire. I thought, oh no, like don't want to tell her guy okay, yeah, a real buzz kill. Ha! If she did not. <laughs> <laughs> my performance check. Natural one. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, but no, she's smart. She she was like, mm. <laughs> she she would know immediately from the kindness of his eyes, right? <laughs> yeah, and right. Then the, the smile and the flatness of his teeth just yeah. says more. <laughs> <laughs> this one's definitely gonna be a cop when he grows up. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I just so blunted guys... my arrows. Yeah, I know. Real cop would sharpen. <laughs> so you guys come out. <laughs> sure. Shoot to kill. Ask questions later. So you guys head out of the store. Oh, God. What would you like to do? Go back in the store. Well, I know you wanted to hit up the uh, <laughs> luminance store it. too, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, you go back in. Yeah. 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 Glorp is just when he goes back in. If anyone looks, I'm like, yeah, I think. Oh yeah, when you guys all walk out, there's just two orcs just standing there, and they're like, "Oh, hey, what's up? Howdy!" And just uh, to join our day shopping, you know, shopping the shops. Hey, me? Do they have anything on them? Too. Like weapons? I, like they said, they were shopping. Oh no, <laughs> nope. Just big no, old orcs with their arms crossed. I uh, looks like you really bought a lot of groceries there. We're more window shoppers, you know. Price pricing it out. I uh, looking for those deals. What my core runs back and said, I definitely wanted to find like the nearest like flat surface where I could set my cool new alchemy jug. Okay, yeah, sure, easy and enough. I'm gonna set it there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uncork. <laughs> that, that would be all of the picnic tables they've set up in the middle. Yeah, of perfect. The thing. So I, I just slam this big ass jug on top of the on top of the thing, and I uncork one of the the caps that's green, and I hold the jar over there, and you just see like thick, juicy acid start dripping into the bo- into the bottle, and I cork it, and I screw the other one, and I make another one, and I want to cork the thing, and I'm like. <laughs> and it's, I only have enough to make two vials a day. So. Nice, nice. All right, you head back in. And now my alchemy. So she was just walking to the back and sees you. She's like, "Oh, welcome in again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stats for asking. All right. Come on. <laughs> and uh, you head to the back through like a little beaded curtain. And uh, when you get back there, it's just it's like lit and red. <laughs> it's just a bunch of like dirty cobwebby stuff and some uh, a. Uh, a, a wooden little, uh, like a little storage uh, case, uh, shelving case with like different bottles and stuff on it and cans. And uh, she just like presses in on it, and you hear like a and she pulls it open, and there's a staircase down. The scuba den of the And uh, yeah, she pulls and, and shuts it, and you get down there, uh, and you see uh, for the first time. Uh, the uh, faint blue flicker of uh, the whale light, uh, which you've pro- you've probably seen this before. Uh, it's a magical light uh, made from a certain kind of whale, and uh, once it's lit, as long as nothing touches it, it never goes out. Um, and down there are just a ton of drugs, <laughs> just a drug superstore, <laughs> uh, larger than the actual grocery store, and she's like. I've got Sweetheart Clover, I've got Snake Root, I've got Sugar Baby, I've got Aura's Milk, Pixie Fire, Intimate, Robe Dust, what you looking for? I hand her the bag, the, the bag of money I have left. <laughs> what do you and, uh, Just answer, yes. What do you got? Um, uh, a four gold, four silver. Okay. You made 44 uh, earlier. Um, um, yeah, well then I went gambling. <laughs> And then you guys also went gambling with Glorp's money. <laughs> we didn't ask for it. Okay, yeah, you could have stopped him. So Sweetheart Clover is one gold a hit. So you could get that if you wanted. Um, 
It's a, it, it, it's, you smoke it, uh, and you roll a d6, and you either get a plus two to wisdom for two hours, a plus four to wisdom for four hours, a negative two to intelligence for two hours, or a negative four to intelligence for four hours. Uh, snake root, uh, it, she can do it for one goal to hit, because uh, you seem cool. Uh, it's a root that could ground into a hallucinogenic powder. Uh, one dose uh, gives you disadvantage on all perception checks for five minutes. Um, Where's this snake root? Uh, that's snake root. That's it. It just gives you disadvantage. <laughs> it, but it's awesome. It's a good time. Um, <laughs> Sugar Baby is three to five gold a hit, so you don't have the money for that. Uh, Aura's Milk, you don't have the money for. Pixie Fire, you definitely don't have the money for. Uh, you get rogue dust. That's a powder that you snort. Uh, she, she gives you for two gold. Uh, for one hour, you gain one d4 dexterity, but you lose one d4 con. But it's also awesome. <laughs> you said that was uh, two gold to hit. Two. Okay. Yeah. She. Yeah. Like you're fucking awesome, though. Like it's really, really. Like you're just awesome. Um, uh, but you. Yeah, can you, I uh, spend the rest? Of my gold and silver on just supplies like alchemist, alchem- uh, 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 alchemical supplies. Yeah, she can, yeah, she has those too. Yeah, just I want a, a basket of uh, supplies to bring to uh, a perform pool. Sure. Yeah, she she yeah sure. Put, sure put they some, gotta have some like you know bases to cut the cocaine. Tons. <laughs> well, she has a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff too. Like, she's like, that's not what I normally do, but yeah, no. If you guys are making your own weird shit. I totally get it. And yeah, so whatever supplies you guys would need, yeah, she can definitely help you with that. So, uh, local Funko can add about, what was it, one gold and four silver worth of okay. ingredients. And she's like, yeah, you know, whenever you, you know, any of you and your adventuring friends, if you need to pick me up, put me down, or keep me up, or tie me down, you know, a, a good time, <laughs> a bad time, an in-between time, a far out time, Beatrice is your lady, all right? Auntie B, I got you. I got you. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. I fucking. I got you. I can't you. look at you. I'm Nobody like, else. I got drugs. you. Look at these drugs. I'll kill you. I will kill you. I will end your life. I got you, though. I got you. You're yeah. my boy. Yeah, I want to get killed. You're my boy. All right. <laughs> Up the stairs. Let's go. All right. Is there anywhere? Like, does this lead further down? Um. Yeah. Make a make an investigation or a perception like, check. You can't like, really I investigate, am, but make a perception check. I am. Interested in whether or not this actually leads to whatever caves that uh, and sneaky route that uh, Parsnip was supposed to be sure. Ooh. Natural twenty for a twenty-two. It absolutely does. Uh, there is definitely a, a secret door in the back that you can not secret, just obscured door in the back. It's kind of like covered up by uh, some just like hanging rugs and stuff to try to make it look like it's a flat wall, but you can tell there's definitely a door back. Um, and where you're at, you can already see that it's like dug out, and you're definitely it's definitely bigger than the shop that she's in. So you get the idea that this is definitely like a subterranean. Does she uh, have a tattoo? Um, with a natural twenty. Um, actually, I'm not even sure. Hold on, check what her thing is. <laughs> you have so much insight, the DM doesn't know. It's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, like I, I am mostly concerned that uh, uh, Parsnip said that he was uh, right, uh, a member of the crime gang and Skizari. Uh, Skizari, that's right. I can't make my mouth make the, the noise. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering if he is actually recruiting anyone else, and whether or not they are full of shit and just saying like, oh yeah, I totally got a Hell's Angel tattoo. So, uh, she has um, a uh, small tattoo that you do notice on the inside of one of her fingers of a flame. Uh, and uh, that is actually the um, the, uh, the symbol of Riona, who is one of the unaccepted gods, one of the maidens. Uh, she's the maiden of fire and wrath and punishment. Uh, so she might be some kind of like alchemical occultist, maybe, but nothing that shows that she's uh, part of a gang. 
I just want to bring up uh, Parsnip on the way out. Oh, and, sure. And see what her reaction is. Yeah, she's like, oh, that guy? That guy owes me 20 gold. If you see him, if you're friends with him, you tell him. Grandma B, she's looking for him. All right, I thought it was Auntie B. Auntie B, whatever old lady name you want. <laughs> I'm, your, I'm, I'm your girl, you know what I mean? I'm your girl. That wasn't your. I you, have you, you got me, ma. I have you killed. I do. I have me, ma. <laughs> Anytime I want, I can touch we're you anywhere you go. Mo- but mo- I love Beatrice. you. And I want you to. I want you to feel good. You know, I just want you to feel good. Pick me up. You know. I want it too. I All right. Real bad. Bring back gold. Bring back gold for Auntie B. I want to get killed. I want to die. I want to kill you. <laughs> I want to get. I want to get punished. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, all right, <laughs> fuck out of my store. She got but come back. Don't come back. Come back though with money. But don't come back too soon. But not too soon. And, that yeah, and, and don't let him make sure no one follows you. You know. Who was it? Riona. Yeah. Yeah, Riona, uh, who was one of the maidens, one of the unaccepted uh, new gods. All right, so you come out of the store. It is uh, about, uh, I don't know, it's still like 9, 10 a.m. You got a couple hours to kill if you need to. Hand over the sack of goods. You go to Lyra's uh, sundial store? Oh, sure, 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 sure. The light, fun. the light bringer? Yeah. Um, the Illuminari? Got to get used to my binder stuff. He's going the wrong way. All right, so you head to uh, Lyra's Illumin- Illuminances, uh, Sundials and such. Uh, you meet Lyra Torin. Uh, she is an elf. Uh, she sells candles, hooded lamps, incense, matches, torches. Uh, and then she also has a back room area um, that More sells... Uh, yeah, it connects to... <laughs> uh, uh, no, it sells incredibly fancy lights, lamps... Um, this town is way better than I thought. <laughs> I mean, just because the one store. She's a, and so yeah, when, when, uh, she's super nice. Uh, tons of sundials, hourglasses, uh, measured candles Where? that can measure how long things have but been. No. Uh, she's like, hi. What do you? What do you? Uh, how can I help you? We can uh, diversify the area. I was to told uh, you guys have reverse track musical track. instruments. Uh, possibly strings and things like that. Oh, um, I do. It's mostly second hand. What kind of instrument? Are you just looking for strings? For like a for what? For a lute or a lyre or a harp or? I can't remember what. Uh, I think it was a mandolin. That was, uh, the one that Tristan had. Yeah. That was a lyre. It was a lyre. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, oh yeah, I do. Um, I have. They're used, but they're in good condition. Um. Someone brought in a, a, a liar uh, that was broken. I couldn't repair it, but I do have some strings. I can't help myself to make comments about boy. You should just tell me, tell the truth. <laughs> that guy's a real jerk. And uh, she's like, I can give it to you for. Uh, do you want to? I don't. I don't know. Two silver. Sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so she yeah, she gets them and she kind of winds them and, and puts them in a little a uh, little bag for you. So do you play? Oh wait. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Do you play? No. Yeah. Oh no, I choked someone to death. He played. He played a nice song at one of our acquaintances' funerals. Yeah. Cool. Oh wow. I see. I sort of see. Uh, you know, you hand out the strings. Are they made of metal or are they made of like a? They are made of metal. They are not a nylon string or anything. Yep, they are metal strings. Or do you want them to not be? No, I was just going to ask if she had any pieces and or parts from this metal string that might be long enough to fit around a neck. A tree limb roughly neck size. <laughs> and she's like, oh my god, no. I don't have any wire that could wrap around a neck size tree limb. I mean, what if it was just a gnome neck? Oh my oh. god. No, I'm so sorry. Okay. It's mm. another fancy lanterns do you have in the back then? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, she has uh, regular lanterns, hooded lanterns. Uh, 
She also has um, daylight lanterns that uh, do uh, true daylight out to uh, 30 feet. Uh, she has... Uh, rocket magic. How, yeah. much, how much does that cost? Uh, that is 450 gold. I'll uh, give you 48 silver. <laughs> it is a one of a kind. Do you have your first persuasion check? That's why this place doesn't have a vampire problem. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other side, the, the other shop is uh, an underground warren of uh, questionable intent, and this place is just filled with full-on sunlight all the time. <laughs> She's like, uh, Ugh, I love this lamp because it's so unique, but also it burns my eyes because I'm trying to sleep. It's terrible. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if she has anything else that's, uh, you know. Yeah, no, most of her stuff is just really fucking nice. Pretty expensive lamps. Uh, they all go for like between twelve and thirty gold. They're all handmade stained lamps. She has hourglasses. She has candles uh, that um, can count the minutes or hours. She also has some of the um, the the whale flame candles that don't ever go out. They just burn forever. Um, How much are those? Uh, for a whale flame candle, they're like about this big. Uh, it's uh, four gold. For each one, um, they have. She has thicker ones that are more ornate, and, and they're six gold. They never go out, but does the candle wax burn down? Not really. Um, it's it's the 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 flame just isn't that hot. Uh, it, it's the whale blubber makes it so the flame doesn't burn that hot, and it just stays on. Basically. How far out does light shed? Um, like a normal candle, whatever that is. Not very not bright, dim light out to uh, 15 feet. Yeah, I'd hand. say something like that, yeah. So I was curious if we took bright, bright light up to 5 feet. And the they, there is whale flame torches, so she doesn't have any. But well, those Do you happen to just have the, useful, the, the whale oil? Dim. She does not. Uh, she's like, all the whale oil would be mostly on coastlines. She's like, we don't get that much in there. She's like, maybe if you went to a major city, uh, you could probably get some. Um... I would say maybe Cross Toma would have some, maybe, but for sure Gilder Lake would have shops that would have it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I was thinking if we just put one in a hood and, hood and lantern, we'd never have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, and for sure Mizzen Tour Plague would have them like, all up and down the, the coast. They'd have I mean, that, you could put that whale flame candle inside the lantern. Yeah. It wouldn't be as bright as like just plain oil, but... I don't know if we actually bought any of those lanterns. Mm-mm. Too so. expensive. No, I figured as much. Let's see what we get from the bees guild. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, 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 I think I yeah, think that's uh, all I yeah, needed. We are ready to go. All right. Any uh, anybody else stopping anywhere mm-hmm. else? You guys want to head back to the? Got to go back to the. Got to go back to the inn so that Glorp can inspect. Uh, Stewart's work. Yeah. He wants to make sure when we're done out there that we come mm-hmm. back to a well cleaned room. This room is not fucking spotless. Like, I want it so clean. Do you have uh, that even that stick in the okay. ass people that came here last yeah. night now will come back here again? Okay. So you, uh, you head back over. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check of the rugs. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to pay you to clean the car. Um, <laughs> perfect. Brand new. There's, not only is there no scent of you, there's no scent, period. Um, really? Go ahead and make an investigation. Oh. <laughs> no, was just, I was just about to say the same thing. I'm like, uh, I'm definitely stealing whatever's in that bottle. 14. It takes a bottle. Smells I slightly like goblin piss. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It, it probably smells like me then. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, the rooms are all tucked down. There's mints on the pillows. This guy's this guy's a goddamn virtuoso. Yeah, and then uh, in uh, all of your rooms, there's also a little note uh, that says, uh, "Can't wait to crack the case with you." Oh God. <laughs> uh, detective gang forever. Heart Isaac. So. I I was I, I was originally thinking we should offer this man a job. 
to follow us around and clean up after Glorv and I as we do more sciences. But now I'm just like, what a fucking nerd. <laughs> I mean, I have manacles that are... <laughs> Other gags. And gags. Like... Glorv, those are for prisoners, not employees we want to I don't rule want over with guy. an iron fist, not iron chains. That's, we, I mean, we could just safely leave him in the room, bound and gagged. Well, and not, not he's coming him. with us on the well, adventure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, we don't have to bring him with us. We could mm-hmm. just leave him here. Well, it was Leaf's idea to I don't trust with. that he won't somehow get what out. What do you mean hurt? you don't trust him? Look at what he did to our pillows. He also he's wanted trying to, to He's trying to get your favor. I don't... He wants to yeah, cause a little war yes, between as much as Rumor and Fanthorpe. I don't, I don't trust that at all. Oh, he's just, that's just that weird hillbilly shit. We could hang him to the wall. And his words again. again, he wants to tie up the dead ends, so let's bring him with us. Yes, we will tie his dead ends up in the sewers of under the lake town. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Torture him for his uh, cleaning recipe. You heading, uh, heading yeah. up to meet him? Um, well, you said it's still like. Yeah, you've had it over here now, and you've done your investigation. Okay. I mean, do you, if you have stuff to do, you, do you have time to do it. No, I was like, yeah, you trying to draw this out, man? What else? No, you got going I didn't on? know if he'd be there yet. I was <laughs> gonna like, say, I want to go to the bath. I was gonna <laughs> say we could just go <laughs> greet him in this room and be like, hey, we're going. I was like, you want you want me to do more science real quick? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you all gather any belongings that you need. I'm gonna, uh, yep, two pillowcases. Okay. You uh, dump the feathers out, destroying the room, <laughs> shaking all the feathers out. Uh, you're like, this is why they call it the feather and tickle. I get it now. I'm, fo- I'm following behind him, just picking up like handfuls of these feathers and like stuffing them into like my various pouches and stuff. Yeah, you have a bunch like, of you never know when a good feather soft comes goose in. feathers now, and you have two pillowcases. Um, and the room is just destroyed. Like you can't see through the pillowcases, right? Uh, no, no, okay. they're just white linen pillowcases. Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you Please head... don't make a hood out of those. Oh, God. <laughs> well, they were going to be a hood, but not you get, that guy. You get a torch. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. All right, we're ready to go. We're, we're ready trying. to go find this man <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Oh, no. <laughs> So, <laughs> just like that, the stream is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if you play the, if you play this incorrectly, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I did not intend that? to put eye holes in the tape. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's fine. fine. See, yeah. I'm gonna switch instruments while we're while we're here. Okay. Uh, so, what do you grab? What do you have now? I'll, I'll loot. All right, your your loot that you okay. originally had. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, so you guys, uh, get all, all the uh, equipment that, uh, you, you need for this ad- adventure. Uh, you head down the street to the front gate. Uh, Isaac is there waiting for you. Um, he has a, um, a, a little rapier with him mm-hmm. now and, and, a, and a knife. Uh, and, uh, he has an adventuring kind of like Robin Hood hat on. And he's like... I am ready for this. Oh, and a little bit of rope. Like he's like, this is going to be. We're going to crack this case, chums. And uh, does he have a magnifying glass? He just not that you see, not visible. Does he have a what? Magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. Oh. And uh, while he's talking to you, he's like, open the gates, open the gates, and uh, they they pull the gates open, and uh, standing. Right before the gates, walking towards the gates as they open, uh, is a rabbit uh, with his ears tied back, war paint <laughs> spread on his face, walking a white horse with matching war paint. And he's like, <laughs> I have got a story for all of you. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. <laughs> before we wrap up. Yeah. While, while he's like amazed with the rabbit, can I use Mage Hand and just kind of like throw the hat in the air? <laughs> sure. You can knock his hat off, actually. He will have no idea. He'll, wow. think, he'll, no think, it was, he'll think it was the wind. <laughs> it's an auspicious sign that my hat was carried into the air as a sign of success. Uh, if you are still with us, thank you for watching. If you're watching uh, the, uh, the replay on YouTube, thanks for following along. 
Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Join us next week uh, for uh, session four of the campaign uh, as the group heads down uh, to find a cave and uh, look for a man and his child. Um, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, oh, the Instagram is now uh, officially working. Uh, so uh, Tales of Aona on Instagram uh, is the best and pretty much only way to uh, contact us on uh, online. We have an email address. You don't need it. Why, why would you need to email us? So just DM us. If you, need, if you want to talk to us, DM us. Uh, follow along uh, on Instagram, please. Uh, you can uh, follow me on TikTok. I have changed the name of GitHype's TikTok to just Lance Waste. It seemed way more... Uh, made more sense uh so lance waste at uh tiktok uh you can uh follow us here uh at uh well if you're watching no i shouldn't say here twitch <laughs> uh if you haven't yet follow us on twitch uh which is get hyped twitch or on youtube which is get hyped youtube and uh we will see you next week uh same bat time same bat channel thanks so much guys goodbye bye